Turn your fast dance, girl, you bound back that. I know you back that. You like to get to the back. back. Yeah. Turn your fast dance, girl, you bound back that. I know you back that. You like to get to the back. back. Yeah. Turn your fast dance, girl, you bound back. We didn't even need to listen to a full run through of that because um we here for Potomac. We know what we here for. I'm I'm done. Hey, Eileen. Hi, Kimmy. I'm done with the show. I'm done with the show. I am so done with this show. And I'm gonna tell you why. Cause y'all y'all could have kept this Y'all could have kept this reunion. Y'all could have kept all three parts of this reunion, especially if y'all was going to try to force feed us the whole accountability train of Candace and Wendy, but y'all weren't going to hold nobody else accountable for the things that they said or they did. Y'all could have kept it. It was not needed. I'm here to tell you now. I got an announcement by the end of this live, and I hope everybody is here for here to hear it and if you not here to hear it oh mother of the whale oh goddamn well okay they really could have kept this they could have kept this and apart i'm gonna just tell you one of the big this whole gordon and mia thing because i feel like if you call them by their actual names i mean i don't really like her so she was everything but a child of god to me but if you call them by their actual names, God-given names, the ones that their mothers gave them, hello, Ellen, hello. When they were born and signed the certificates down to the hospital and said that this is your government name, this is what you shall go by, then they shall do better. Because explain to me, logic, okay, we, we speak in logic right now. Explain to me how... She claimed to have left this man because he was depressed and he was being mean to her. But we find out two years ago he was diagnosed with bipolar 1. But you said you left him because he was mean to you and he was depressed and he wasn't doing anything. But now it's you left because he was bipolar. He's bipolar allegedly, and he was going through a manic state. I'm confused. I'm also confused on how you and your family is good and y'all good back together. Are y'all good and cool again because y'all are separated and about to get divorced? Or here's what I'm also confused about. Everybody thought y'all was completely out of them businesses. How is it that you no longer have the CEO titles, y'all no longer get paid a salary, but y'all still have shares in the business? That makes no sense. That's weird. That's suspicious. Like, I feel like they're playing on my intelligence and I'm supposed to just go along with it. But because I'm not stupid and I'm not willing to just take what everyone says at face value, maybe I'm the problem. I might be. But let's get into this. Gordon tells us he was diagnosed with bipolar 1. Do I know if that man was diagnosed with bipolar 1? I don't know. That's why I say allegedly. Because I can't believe nothing to come out the mouths of one Gordon nor one Mia. They lie. They be lying. A lot. 
he says the stages of mania are different. He's using this. He's basically using him being in a manic state to excuse whatever he said or did to that woman. Basically, this is an excuse for him to get out of taking accountability for him going on that smear campaign, that press tour where he was dogging her out and calling her everything but a child of God and putting a business out on Front Street for everyone to hear and see. That's what he's doing. He's using this as a way to say, well, you know, it wasn't really that bad because I was going through mania. So you can't blame me for my actions. You can't, you can't, you can't. And it's just like, you can, you can, you can. Because you say, when you are asked if you're taking medication, no. Just the, just the sheer force, power, will, and prayer will help me get through mania. I don't need medication. So you're actively not taking medication for a bipolar one diagnosis, or you didn't do a follow-up to actually get on medication to help you, you know, help control the things that are going on, keep you from going into a manic episode or multiple manic episodes and being destructive to not only you, but everyone else's lives to keep you from burning everything else down around you. No, just free will and prayer. That's what we're going on. Free will and prayer. Now, free will and prayer make sense in, you know, some things, but you are bipolar. And I'm not being ableist. I don't know if he is. I'm telling y'all, these people lie a lot. You got to take what they say at face value. But Oh, my eyes. He's bipolar, but you refuse to get on medication. You refuse to regulate your bipolar. You refuse to get a handle on your mani your manic episodes. It's almost like you don't want to get better. It's almost like you are in denial about your diagnosis. And I'm going to be honest. As a person who suffers from depression and panic attacks... And, you know, throw an anxiety attack. And I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty sure there's a few other things. Because I'm known to overthink. Whatever help I can get, I'm going to take. And if there's a way to help myself without having to go on full-blown medication, I will do so. But also, depression has its highs and its lows. And panic attacks, you just got to, from what I've learned from myself, I just got to ride those things out. And anxiety attacks as well. But bipolar, no, you need to be on medication. We've already seen one, what happens when someone decides they don't want to be on their medication. Kanye West, anyone? Mm -hmm. In his manic episodes, we've seen what that looks like. But, you know, he going to pray it away. And I guess, you know. If that's what we going with, he going to pray it away. He said he going to pray it away. He going to pray it away. Don't question him about it. He going to pray it away. <sighs> now, after he done went on this smear campaign of this woman, he's singing her praises. She's such a good mother. She's such a good wife. She's taking care of me. When I was in a hospital, she came and saw me. She was only she only missed one day. She brought me clothes and shoes. She paid my bills and she bought me food. And she did this and she did that. She's such a good woman. But oh no, 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 no. She was everything but a child of God to you a couple months ago. A couple months ago, she was the devil herself. That's what you said. You were the one who went around here with a smear campaign and was hitting up Candace and Wendy's husbands because you wanted the information to get back to them because you hoped that they would use what you gave them against her. You are the one who went on TMZ. You're the one who was down to the Instagrams and the Twitters and the Facebooks and all up in the roof dragging this woman for filth. And she's also the woman who just got on Watch What Happens Live and called you a little girl and said you need to pull your skirt up because your slip is showing. That's what's going on over here. So don't tell me that y'all are good friends. Don't tell me that y'all are cool. Don't tell me that y'all have a good relationship because you don't. You don't.
because it says, well, you know, now that you're leaving, I'm worried about him. I'm worried about Gordon. And here goes me. Well, I'm always going to be there for him. I'm always going to be there for him. I'm never going to stop being there for him. How does that look with your new man? Hmm. How does that look with your new man? Is he okay with you always being there for Gordon? Is he okay with you overextending yourself for Gordon? Is he okay with Gordon being a pivotal point in your relationship as in I want to go do X, Y, and Z, but I can't because I have to help Gordon? These are all logical questions that nobody wants to ask these people because either they crunch him for time or it just does not pop in your head to ask these questions of someone you're paying to be on this show to showcase their life. What does this look like for you and that man who always has glasses on? Oh, it 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 doesn't look good. It doesn't. Because at some point he's going to get sick of Gordon being around. He's going to be sick of the fact that Gordon lives across the street from you. He's going to be sick of the fact that you spend so much time with Gordon trying to help him with his mental health diagnosis that it's going to cause problems. I already think the man is trying to get on the show. So, you know, there's that if there is a show. Him and the new man is cordial. I said, I don't know how you cordial with someone who was sleeping with your wife and flaunting it in your face and had everybody down to the patanka knowing about it. I'm not sure how you're cordial with someone who came up into your house and tried to take your son, whether he is biologically yours or legally yours. He's still your son. I don't know how you cordial, but okay. Cordial my ass. He and his family are now good. And I said, oh, so y'all are good now that you and her are getting a divorce. Got it. They never liked her. Never liked her. One of the, I think it was like a niece or a cousin, was down to the Instagram at some point talking about how they spent up all the granddaddy's money. Um, And there's no more lawsuits. And they still own shares in the business. I said, well, that makes no sense. But you know, I'm speaking logic and they're speaking lies. So obviously, it wasn't going to work. Once again. Speaking logic while they're speaking lies, everyone's going to be confused because they want to believe the lies. Some people, other people who believe in logic is like, well, this don't make no damn sense. They could have kept the me and Gordon of it all. She lies, he lies, and they lied to get them another season, but to also endear this woman to the, the public. Oh my God, she's such a good woman. She's taking care of him after he did this and after he did that. No, she's not. No, she's not. She's not. Most people, because once again, I'm going to have to reiterate this. He said he was diagnosed two years ago. They were still married and quote unquote happily married two years ago. So why wasn't your wife saying you need to go get your medication? You need to go do you know, more extensive testing on your, you know, your diagnosis. You need to do X, Y, and Z. Why is it that she didn't do that? But now here we are, and this is a palpable reason for you to get away with your bad behavior. Don't use mental illnesses and mental, like, don't use mental illness as a way to get away with your bad behavior. That's not something that's cool. So we get on to the NECA part of it. And I'm going to just be honest. I'm, she's been watching my videos. She has, and I know she has. Um, me and Mother Feisty talked about this last night, and she pointed out that she she definitely was watching your videos. And I was like, oh, yeah, because who other than me heavenly mentioned that she probably should have just been on Married to Medicine? Who other than me said she should have just been on Married to Medicine and been done with it? That was me. I said that because she made more sense over there, as in she's a MRS D. Married to Med. MRS MED. Married to Med. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. she been watching my videos. I said you should be on Married to Medicine. Now, we won't know if you were actually called to be on Married to Medicine until Heavenly either mentioned something about it or we learned something totally new but 
girl, you've been watching my videos and you had to have been watching my videos because I'm really the only person who ever mentioned that you should have been uh, married to me medicine extensively. On top of that, you got the iced out part for me or you got it from social media. And I'm not going to take her, oh, the iced out because I never said that anybody was icing her out. I said they were icing Candace and Wendy out. But the married to medicine thing, oh, no, you got that for me. You did. You did. But let's get into her and her whack-ass storyline. The IUI didn't work. And I said, well, it didn't work because that man has a low sperm count. We heard about his low sperm count when the doctor who just disregarded everything about you and told you what you were doing wrong and saying that he was doing everything right said that your husband had a low sperm count. Maybe y'all should focus on trying to get his sperm count up and stop trying to do invasive things on you until that sperm count has reached the all peak high. Someone, one of the viewers asked her about Wisconsin. She grew up in Wisconsin. She doesn't mention Wisconsin, but she does mention LA, Nigeria, and Potomac. You grew up in Wisconsin. That's where you got the... Because people were calling her a Valley Girl accent. That was a Valley Girl accent. That was a, I grew up in Wisconsin, you know, right there on the outskirts of Chicago. But, you know, I'm not a real Chicagoan. And, you know, I just want to be down. I believe she grew up around a lot of palm color alabaster demons. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But at some point in time, when you feel like you need to put on this, oh, woe is me act when it comes to certain people all because you are trying to help out the GEBs and get them the fuck up off the show, then you hold no favor with me. You get no passes with me. You cannot trick me. You, you cannot trick me, okay? So we get on the whole Wendy NECA production, what happened there. So it goes like this. Production called Wendy and said, we have somebody we want you to bring on. They told her about Nick. She said, I don't know her. And the only reason why they said anything to her about this woman is because they had mutual friends and thought that they knew each other and were cool. Wendy said, I don't know her. She also wanted to bring Kiana on. Kiana, her friend, she wanted to bring Kiana on. I saw someone say on Twitter, it made sense as to why Wendy did not want to bring Neck on the show. Because once a falling out happened, which we saw happen, you were going to have to explain. Like the whole Fallon Porsche thing that I don't really know her. We're not really friends like that. Because she, um, Wendy would have got hit with a, why'd you do your friend like that type of thing? Because that's what they were going for. So Wendy's like, I don't know her like that. It was nothing to do with her being another Nigerian. It had nothing to do with her being a uh, uh, Igbo sister. It had nothing to do with that. I don't know her. Now you can know of someone. You can meet someone. But that does not mean I know you well enough to bring you on a show that I'm already getting hell and flack on. It, it, it's not. It makes no sense. Neka says, well, you did know me. We met at a concert and we had a conversation. So you met at a concert, okay? That does not mean she knows you. You had a conversation. But when you said in the beginning, y'all said, a, you know, a few words to each other. You know, you said hello. You said a couple things to her and kept it pushing. So that now equates to a conversation. I'm very confused. That now equates to a conversation. I said a few words to her and we kept it pushing. Okay. At the end of the day, you knew of Wendy. Wendy possibly knew of you. I doubt it as seeing as Lebe and Ivy were best friends. And Lebe and Wendy were associates at best. Not best friends, cool maybe, but we not friends like that. And at the end of the day, Wendy wanted to bring her friend, her real friend, 
known as Kiarna. Get it right. There's an R in her name. It's not Kiana. It's Kiarna on the show. Why would I disregard bringing my good, real good girlfriend on this show for someone I don't know? That makes absolutely positively no motherfucking sense on the face of the planet. It doesn't. They bring up Osu. And Wendy said to football heads, and she brought it up, and since she seemed to know so much about it, explain what it means. And she gets to st 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 stuttering about it. And she's like, why are you stuttering? You had all that gall. You had all the gumption. You had all the coochie muscles in the world to bring this up when y'all are quoting a source that has never been right what day in their life. You wanted to bring a rumor to the show and you decided to do it. And then you decided to give it to the other Igbo girl on the show to cause a ruckus and cause problems. She football head is a menace to society and she cannot be trusted because we see what she does with information that is false when she starts to stutter and saying well you know um i i didn't say anything to disparage you but you did disparage her osu is taboo you just don't touch it there are some things that are taboo that you just don't speak on and that's one of the things and it shouldn't have been brought to this show you don't have the intelligence or the know-how or the respect for their culture to speak on this. And NECA tried to speak up a football head and Wendy wouldn't shut that down. No, since she wanted to bring it to the show, she could be the one to explain what Osu is. Since she want to run that mouth so goddamn much, I'm sorry. At this point in time, football head Ashley decided to unhinge her jaw and say what she said. Why? Because she had nothing motherfucking going on in her personal life to bring to this show. Because that man that she's still very much married to. And if you let me tell it, I don't believe that the house we saw on the show was hers. I thought that was an Airbnb and she's still living at 10 can in the sky. Refuses to film with her and told her he was going to sue her. So now she has nothing going on and she has to go after people because she's bored and she has nothing to do. And she's so desperately trying to hold on to this check. Girl, at this point in time, if you're not going to show your real life, if you don't get the phone, we don't want you. We don't want you on the show. If you refuse to show your real life, you know what the point of reality TV is to show your life. You sign on to be a real housewife of Potomac. So being a real housewife of Potomac means you have to show your life. Unless you want to be a friend of the show and then you don't really have to show your life that much. You just have to be a friend of. You set up here and brought this to the show because you're trying to help the GEBs ice out Wendy. One of the... Between her and Candace, six degrees multiple White House appearances, a news correspondent, a talk show host, entrepreneurs, national titles and pageants, loving husbands. Candace and Wendy is Real Housewives. Y'all decided to ice out the Real Housewives of Potomac, like the real, real housewives. Like the only people on the show that are real, real housewives are Karen, Wendy, Candace. But Karen is on my shit list today too. So y'all decided to ice out Wendy and Candace, the real housewives of Potomac. Cause you're jealous? Cause you don't have what they have? Because you're bored and nothing going on? If you don't, if you don't get the fuck out of my face with this, out of my face out of here talk about well i didn't i didn't i didn't do anything to disparage you you did disparage her you did you did you did disparage her which then led into you disparaging helping disparage her mother well i don't believe they're evil no but you decided to bring up being osu and then you got naked here talking about wendy's mother is a witch i don't believe that lady's a witch shrines that lady is catholic you submit names to shrines for prayer, as in pray for them, pray to heal their hearts, pray to heal, heal their minds, pray that these people get some clarity and stop fucking with my kid. That type of thing. But oh no, y'all want to make it something so vile and disgusting and just 
dark because y'all have nothing going on and want to make other people miserable. Talking about, I didn't do it to disparage you. You did. You did. You you want nobody's real friends. You don't have no real friends on this show because you don't know how to be a real friend to any of these women on this show because your jealousy always shows. You are completely and honestly, honestly jealous of the women who have good relationships with their husbands and don't have to beg, borrow, steal, and lie to get, afford a $2 million home or however much that house costs that you claim you got. You are jealous of the relationships that some of these women have with their mothers. You are jealous of Candace as it pertains to the fact that she grew up in a two-parent household. Not once, but twice. After her, her mom, her, after her mom and daddy got divorced, it was her mother and her stepfather, two parent household, and she was raised with generational wealth. She didn't have to worry about if the lights were going to get turned off, if the water was going to get turned off, if they was going to get put out of the house. You are jealous, and instead of working to make yourself a better life and give what your mother didn't give to you and fix and heal that inner child within yourself, you've decided to spew your venom and your hate to all the other people around because you were miserable and jealous. And I'm here to tell you that therapy works. It helps heal the inner child and you shall be better. I mean, your forehead is always going to look like that. It really is. But therapy will help you work out all of those issues you got because you got mommy issues and you damn sure got daddy issues for you to marry that man schmeagle mm -hmm. so she gets to stuttering talking about well only talked about what was brought to my attention nobody brought it to your attention you were scur scouring the internet looking for something to bring to the show to go after candace or wendy with because you had to keep your check i got them i And she says, you know, I've apologized, but I won't fall on the sword for what happened after. Nothing happened after because it cannot be proven that Wendy's mother called Lebe. Even if she did, it can't be proven what she said. We didn't hear no voice recordings. We didn't hear anything like that. Her mother claims that I said it is easy to make an enemy. It's hard to keep a friend and i'm here to tell you that's true it's easier to make an enemy out of someone than it is to make a friend because like listen a lot of people i don't like it's easier to be an enemy than a friend because if, to be a friend you actually have to put work and stock into your relationships and you actually have to be there you actually have to be like you know cool Talking about these heifers is giving me dry eyes. I don't like this. Then here go NECA. Because they got on the, well, what can Wendy and NECA do to be good friends again? Like, or be friends or, you know, build a new start and, you know, turn a, new, turn a leaf, get a new chapter. Wendy said, I have no problems with her. I'm not friends with her. We could be cordial. Well, you tried to ice me out this group. And you've been lying all day. And you did this. And you did that. And it's once again, we can be cordial. That's all you was going to get. Why no, we going to be friends. You called that lady's mother a witch. And then your bots, because the bots were only liking your stuff, following you and going after people who had anything to say about you as in we don't trust this situation they were your bots allegedly them bots were threatening wendy threatening wendy's kids threatening to pew pew wendy in the head threatening to pew pew wendy's children threatening to burn wendy's house down with her and her children inside and so much more i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna say this now i believe them bots were the sole reason for why Wendy's house got broken into. Because they put her address out there to the public. They went and researched her home and put it out there to the public. It's the only reason Wendy's home got broken into while she was on vacation. And a lot of people's like, well, she shouldn't have been posting 
in real time that she was on vacation. Yeah, she shouldn't have been posting in real time that she was on vacation. But it's not like Wendy put her address out there for people to see. You may have seen like the outside of her home or the inside of her home. No, you saw the inside of her home. You never really actually saw the outside of her home until the bots got a hold of her information and put it out there for the world to see. So, what would deduce that it was a good thing that Wendy, Eddie, and the children were on vacation when the people broke into the house? Because who knows what the, what's going to happen because they were threatening Wendy and the kids. Y'all will never be cool. I wish that would have been brought up at the reunion. I wish that would have been brought up at the reunion. Y'all were never going to be cool because there were bots sitting up here threatening that lady, threatening her kids, threatening her safe space, which was her home. Material things be damned. At least they was on vacation because God knows what could have happened because people is crazy out here. Talking about Wendy Ice me out the group. Now, how big? How she ice you out the group? Come here, talk to me. How she ice you out the group when she was being iced out herself? We saw more of you, even though what we saw of you wasn't really nothing because we didn't even know you was from Wisconsin. We had to learn that at the reunion. That shows just how much of a fuck up you did with your first season. You didn't show none of your life. Didn't really get to meet your family. We didn't see you lawyer lawyering anything. They cut out your little champagne event. So it's just like, do you really have champagne? We don't know. Wendy iced me out the group. How? When, let's see, one, two, let's see. There's Candace, Wendy, La Cienega. Candace, Wendy, Karen, La Cienega, football head, Gizzard, Richard, you. One, two, let's see, three, five, that's eight. Okay, that's eight people on this cast. Okay, I'm doing the math. Karen, Wendy, Candace, they're packaged still, even though Karen rides that goddamn fence and she's on my shit list. But Karen and Candace don't count. So it's a cast of eight. And five out of the eight are icing out Candace and Wendy. And then we have to add the friends of the group. So you have Deborah and you have Cal and you have Sharice. Am I missing anybody? Probably not. So that goes to a full eight. Ice and Candace and Wendy off the show and talking bad about them. You got more screen time than Candace and Wendy and they have more tenure on this show than you. Girl, get the fuck out of my face with this. No one iced you out. No one mistreated you. No one treated you badly. You actually got a very light season. You definitely brought this on yourself as to what the people had to say about you. You definitely did because instead of coming on the show and showcasing your life, you decided to go after Wendy for what, for why, for what, poor Kate. It makes no sense to me other than the fact that Gizzard and Richard said, these are who we're going after and if you want to be down with us, then you got to go after them too. And you decided, well, I want to be a part of the popular crown. I want to be like I was in Wisconsin in LA where I was a part of the eight girls. And it's just like the eight girls over there in Potomac is boring as fuck. They're boring. They don't have any one-liners. Their fashions are horrible. Their hair is awful. That podcast is raggedy as a motherfucker. And one of them got a big ass forehead. I want to be a part of the GEBs. You're a minion. Stay in your minion place. Talk about, you tried to ice me up, girl, get the fuck out of my face. I apologize. No, you didn't. You're, her talking about, well, I apologize. Your apologies mean nothing when you do, but you did this. Which, once again, when he asked, what did I do to her? That is a logical question. You are running down everything you claim my family did. But my question is, what did I do to you? Once again, let me slow it down. What did I do to you? What? She can't say what Wendy did to her. And the crackhead comment, Wendy apologized for. Personally, at the end of the day, you call my mother a witch. You're going to be everything but a child of God. You trying to put this, you know, say all this stuff about my mother. Oh, quit playing with me. 
So my my new friend Kiana, she hit the stage. Okay, Wendy and Kiana have met five years ago. They've been cool ever since. They've been really good friends. They met through a mutual friend. So, you know, that's a good thing. They talk about Kiana being not being checked on by Wendy and Candace in the whole room situation. And then we have the GPs. Well, we didn't know that. So the room situation was, it caught on camera, I don't want to share a room with Kiana. Everybody thought Wendy was being shady. Come to find out, no one actually had to share a room. No one was actually going to have to share a room on the trip. So why is it that y'all want me to share a room when no one actually has to share a room? Here goes GVs. But at that time, we didn't know that. At that time, we didn't know that. No, yes, y'all did. Y'all have to know that because production told y'all, oh, we're only doing this for a scene. No one's going to have to share a room. So boom, that knocks out the, oh, Wendy's a bad friend because she didn't want to share a room. Why would I want to? First of all, As a grown-ass woman going on a trip with other grown-ass women. Why would I want to share a room with anybody? Maybe I like to walk around naked. Maybe I want to call my husband and have some phone sex. Maybe I want to have a solo session. Maybe I just want to be able to sleep in without having to worry about anybody else waking me up. Maybe I don't know other people's sleeping patterns, so people might be snoring and so much more. Maybe I want to be up on my phone to the wee hours of the morning, and I can't do that. Or I want to laugh out loud and watch something. Who the fuck knows? But why, as a grown-ass woman, would I want to go out of the country and share rooms with other grown-ass women? We are all in the same villa. I could come out my room and say, hey, girl, wave to your neighbor. Neighbor, hello. Explain that. Then the whole checking on Kiana thing. Kiana still thinks gives up for checking on her. But Candace, and I believe Wendy, but they possibly cut this out, said, child, please, she didn't check on you for the right reasons. And she admitted that she didn't check on her for the right reasons because she said it on the show, your friends didn't check on you. But you came and checked on her. You tried to make it seem like she they were these bad friends. In reality, you came to check on her to try to prove a point to build a narrative that Candace and Wendy are bad friends, just like you tried to like production tried to do as it pertained to them not wanting to share a room. Out of my motherfucking face. Get out of my face with that. Don't do me like that, just simply. Don't you do me like that. Don't you lie to me this way. I don't like being lied to. It is not a good thing. Where'd she announce this? Don't you lie to me, woman. I'll see. Wait, I didn't see. Hold on. Wait a minute. Listen, I've been talking to the people for like almost 40 minutes. I didn't see nothing. I don't have no article talking about Candace being pregnant. I have an article talking about NECA being fired. Now I got that. I got that one. See? There we go. Not to be in fire. I got that. I don't have no articles about her being pregnant. Now where were we? Oh, gives it live trying to say she was a good friend to Kiana. Only to, you know, say that her actual Kiana's friends aren't good friends. Only to turn around and say that the people responsible for the fight were Kiana, Wendy, Kent. Candace and Deborah, but no Ashley. Not your business partner. No business partner involved. She wasn't responsible. She didn't cause these issues. Okay, bitch. Okay. And I had to say it. I really did. It just slipped out. Um. We get to Wendy. Wendy's a multi-hyphenate. She's an entrepreneur. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's a professor. She's a talk show host. She owns a portion of a weed business that's done $2 million in sales so far. Only could go up for here. Everybody like weed, okay? Especially when it's legal. Can't go to jail. Good stuff. People, and then you have 
have these uh comments talking about um questions oh why won't you just stick to one thing why the fuck would i stick to one thing baby let me explain something to you it's a good thing Wendy does not stick to one thing it's a good thing that a lot of people don't stick to just doing one thing we live in a capitalistic society which means that you got to be on top if you want to be able to pay your bills and live comfortably because paying the bills ain't just it no more you got to be able to live comfortably so multiple people have several streams of goddamn income to make sure they can do so so wendy has only home essentials one stream of income being a professor another stream of income being on this show another stream of income Happy Eddie, another stream of income. The YouTube page where her talk show, another stream of income. Um, her book, another stream of income. Traveling around, uh, no, being a news correspondent, another stream of income. Several. There's seven right there. And she about to get rid of one of them because she said this might be her last year teaching because she wants to spend more time with her children. Her daughter is five. Her daughter's about to go off to pre-K. She just wants to be there for the kids. The kids is growing up. So these are the times she got to be at home. And she says she possibly wants to stop being a professor. And it's just like, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to judge if you want to stop being a professor. It's not a problem. You can always go into like, if you want to teach like um who are what are the classes like for the non-traditional students that are going to night school you could always do a couple of those it's whatever she would really like to do but she says she doesn't want to teach anymore and i'm okay with that but don't ever tell a black woman in america who living in a capitalistic society that she just needs to stick to one thing no baby we have to have several streams of income something to pay the bills and something to keep us comfortable and then also something to at least have a little walking around money and also emergency fund this job is to pay the bills this job is for uh, the savings. This job is for the emergency fund. This job is for the sinking fund. This job is for uh, just in case we got to, you know, do something if we got to make a run for it fund. These jobs are keeping the kid. <laughs> this job is for the kids' college if they want to go there. All of these things because we got to keep it. We got to keep it going, especially in the society we live in. Quit playing with the ball. They talk about. Wendy calling me is slow. And she says, I called her slow because she the one who said living in Potomac and living in North Carolina equal to bi-coastal lifestyle. And it's just like, well, I mean, she's not lying. Okay. Um, she did say that. Me did say that living in Potomac and living in North Carolina was bi-coastal. And it's just like, well, that's not bi-coastal. That's not bi-coastal. That don't make no sense. And also trying to leverage and say she called her son slow. That's not what she said. She, he, she said his mama was slow. Now, should she have called you slow? No. But I wouldn't say slow was the word she could use. I would say unintelligent is the word she could have used because you said living in Potomac and North Carolina, which are on the same coast, was a bi coastal lifestyle. It's not. She says, Well, she's called me all times. Listen, like I said, Wendy apologized for the crackhead comment. It was to get at you for saying my mother was a witch. We done with that. Um, because that's the only thing Wendy actually did to her. So, Mia tries to go on this whole thing of she said this and she said that and she said this about me. And it's just like, she called me a pathological liar. And when she said that, I said, but you are a pathological liar. You can never keep a lie straight. Your lies just, you tell a lie and then you forget the lie you told. So then you have to tell another lie on top of that. You just lie for the fun of it. And Candace said, that's why I call her Mia be lying. And she says, well, Candace be crying. And Candace pulled out her cry angle and stuck it in a tear duct. Okay, and you be lying. You lie a lot. Your lies have hit the fan. Point blank and the period. Football head. We're going to get on to this one. Football head. Says her and Schmeagle on a toxic roller coaster. 
when she's filming the show, he's mean to her. When they're not filming the show, he's oh so nice to her. But now he's back being mean to her because they're doing the reunion and stuff like that. And it's just like, he blames you for a lot of stuff that went wrong in his life as it pertains to being on this show. He probably would have got away with a lot of stuff that he was normally used to doing had you not been on this show. And he had to be taken accountable for grabbing on people. Or having his business put out there on Front Street where he allegedly, from what Rob Dixon said, wanted to slob. <coughs> he wanted to grind the pepper and <coughs> on Juan, allegedly. And grab it on a, you know, Andy said he grabbed on him. A cameraman said he grabbed on him. You know what Candace said last season about someone saying that, you know, that man allegedly pays for, pays to, on someone else's schlong, allegedly. All this is alleged, except for that whole thing with the cameraman. That was proven to be true. He blames you for all of this stuff being put out there. So, of course, he's going to treat you badly when you're filming this show because it's just like, it's the root of all evil in his life, as he thinks. She's filed a complaint, allegedly, to get her divorce started, allegedly. I don't trust it. She says, well, he'll be there for the children, but will it extend to me? I don't think so. And it's just like, well, we all knew that wasn't going to happen after he was able to get you to sign some paperwork without your lawyer being around while on a hoverboard and handing you a beer. We all knew you weren't going to get anything. You are the worst upon worst sugar baby in all of the United Americas. You are. She says, you know, when I met him, I was in school. I wanted to be a news broadcaster. And, you know, he wanted to travel. And he said, if I worked a nine to five, then I couldn't travel with him. So I said, well, okay, I'll travel with you. And I gave up my dreams to travel around. And I got comfortable and I got complacent. And now here I am in life. And that was your first motherfucking mistake. You allowed a man to flash his money in front of your face. And you decided that. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to strive to be a news broadcaster anymore. I don't want to work a nine to five. I don't want to make my own way in this life. I would rather hitch my hitch my train or hitch my wagon to this man and see what life gives. And it was cool for a while, so you got comfortable and you got complacent. And then he got to taking stuff away from you and moved y'all into a tin can in the sky when you really wanted a home. You wanted children, and he really wasn't up for that, but still gave you children, and now here you are. He treats you badly based off your words. He, You don't want to divorce him based on last year because you don't want to take his name off the mortgage because he's paying it. At this point in time, you're the worst sugar baby in the face of the planet, and I have no words. I have no advice. I have nothing to give because you messed up when you allowed yourself to be suckered into signing some paperwork without a lawyer there while on camera, and he's on a hoverboard and handed you a beer. And she's talking about, well, I massage his feet every night. You still massage, massaged with a D. No, you said massage. Can't be trusted. Not even in your own life. The girls dragged the tacky clothes in mine. And football head was like, well, Karen, you wore something like that too. And Karen's like, no, the fuck I didn't. <laughs> I would never... So they get onto the whole thing. And like I said, this is where Gizzard tried to blame Candace, Wendy, Kiana, and Deborah, when really the people who are to blame are Deborah and Ashley. Kiana says, I was trying to de-escalate the situation. Wendy was trying to de-escalate the situation. That girl came looking for a problem. We tried to de-escalate the situation. And at a point in time, she stepped into my personal space and was not going to stop. It fight or flight kicked in when Kiana got hit in the face with a glass and got busted open on her forehead. And that's when she got to swing it. But Kiana does good work and she needs to, oh, that business needs to be promoted because she got busted open on the forehead and had to get stitches. Not a scar in sight. Not a scar in sight. She does good work. She does good work. She does good work down at that med spa. She does. Okay. She does. 
if you're ever in the DMV area, y'all go check her out. Cause not a, ooh, not a scar in sight. Girl, it's good work. Deborah, the reason why we find out the reason why Mia was going up for Kiana, Candace, and Wendy during the whole situation of the last episode is because Deborah pressed her, not questioned her, pressed her. Because remember, Mia called Deborah a four, said she went cute. So Deborah, based off what Mia said, I'm a four, Mia, I'm a four. And had Mia not de-escalated the situation, not even de-escalated the situation. When Mia got pressed, instead of continuing to say, yeah, bitch, you a four, a three at best. She said, well, we're all black queens, so we're all beautiful. And the girl kept it pushing. She was looking for a problem that night, and she was very aggressive, and she was going to get a problem with whoever she could get a problem with. That's what that just gives. She was going to get a problem and have a problem with whoever she can get it with. So they sitting up here trying to blame Candace for why that fight escalated. Oh, you're the reason why it happened. And oh, you had Kiana fighting for you. That's what I feel like was cut out of it because uh, like that part got chopped and screwed because it's like a lot of this made no sense. Y'all trying to blame her for why Kiana got into the fight when Kiana said it. Me and Wendy both were trying to de-escalate the situation. That woman stepped into my personal space and would not move. And then hit me in the face with a glass and busted my forehead open. So then it was up and stuck from there. Candace says, it does not matter what names I called her. I called her those names after I told her, no, I don't want to have, a, I don't have a problem with you. And no, I'm not having this conversation. And I was said multiple times to get her out of my face it didn't matter what candace said at the end of the day that woman came looking for a fight at the end of the day that woman had threatened candace before hold on hold on do i still have my evidence of this because this was a setup okay this was a set up I've been told y'all this was a setup. This is what she had to say to Candace before that event. That both her and Chris wanted her cookies. And that Candace needed to keep that same energy and that she would see her real soon. That she would see her real soon. I don't have the Elmo one. But here's her putting on her makeup. She was using Elmo and Cookie Monster puppets to put on her makeup. Doing motherfucking interviews to tell her side of the story, which she has no side of the story. You're a liar. You lied on two pe women's husbands, trying to make them out to be creeps. We well, don't forget, don't forget that Ashley said, I didn't think Candace would do anything. She's not gully. Candace is not a fighter. She doesn't pretend like she is. Candace has a mouth on her. Like everybody has a mouth on her. Just because you can't handle what I say out of my mouth does not mean you can get upset to the point that you want to put hands on me. Be a motherfucking adult and walk the fuck away. That's how this works in life. Unless you are in like, you know, a sport where you actually have to put hands on each other. Like, it's not like y'all WWE wrestlers. It's not like y'all AEW wrestlers or any other company that's out there. It's not like y'all are professional wrestlers. It's not like y'all are professional boxers. Um, none of that. If you don't like what I have to say out of my mouth, then walk away. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to speak. God gave me this mouth and tongue to speak. So... If I said that you were a liar and you looked like Sesame Street and I know my man would never, even though 
because um you can't put nothing past the man, but I don't think Chris would ever go for the likes of a Deborah. And Deborah feels like because she is light skinned with long hair and bushy eyebrows, that she's a man, every, every man's wet dream. Baby, yo, look was in in the eighties. We have all a plethora of different black women, and you know the men just love a plethora of different black women when you know we're not a fetish to them. But anyway. It wouldn't have mattered what Candace would have said to her. Wouldn't matter if Candace would have said, yes, we can have a conversation. Wouldn't matter if Candace said, no, we can't have a conversation. Or if Candace called that lady vermin or anything else because she came looking for a problem. She came to fight while her hair was in a ponytail. And a lot of people were like, well, her hair was in a ponytail and she loves her hair too much. So obviously she didn't come to fight. No, no, no. That hair was in a ponytail. She didn't have her hair down. Her hair was in a ponytail. By the time she got to Candace, like her hair was down when she initially came in. But by the time she got to Candace, she, that hair was starting to get put up. She came dressed for a fight. Y'all go to a fashion show where everybody's dressed up, everybody's looking nice, and you were in a jumpsuit with some easy to kick off heels. And uh, she had a, like a little hair tie on her wrist. She came for a fight. It wouldn't matter what anybody did. She came looking for a fight. She came dressed to go, yes, yeah, she came dressed to go to the gym, but she came looking for a fight, and she got one, she, but she was expecting to get it from Candace, and she got it from Kiana after you threw a glass in that lady's face. You assaulted her. Honestly, Kiana should should have pressed charges against you because you threw a glass in her face, and you drew blood. After you draw blood, it's up and stuck from there. So when Gizzard tries to blame Wendy, Candace, Kiana, and... Deborah, but no Ashley for the situation. They have to argue her down as it pertains to Wendy. Because she's like, what the fuck did Wendy ever do to you? Or what did Wendy do in this situation? Wendy was trying to de-escalate the situation. They have to argue her down. So she says, I'll take Wendy out of it. No, you need to take everybody else up out of it. Because it wouldn't have escalated had Ashley not invited her Sesame Street looking ass friend to the event who was looking for a problem, who had who had already threatened Candace before this event even happened, and who was ready to fight based off the way she came dressed. Now, there's a part where Candace says, I'm not expecting y'all to fight for me. And I think in this part of, because she turned to Kiana and Wendy and said, I'm not expecting y'all to fight for me. They cut that out. As in, they tried to blame Candace for the reason why Kiana got into the fight in the first place. That's what they were doing. Trying to blame Candace for why Kiana got into the fight in the first place. And they said at the season finale that Kiana would have got busted in her face with a glass had she not been trying to fight Candace's battles. So Candace turned to her friends and said, I'm not expecting y'all to fight for me. As in, as grown women, I'm not expecting my other grown women friends to have to physically fight for me. Because another grown woman shouldn't try to put her hands on me over me calling her a Sesame Street character when she played into it and was living it up for the 15 minutes she had. Not even 15 minutes, the 15 seconds she had after she lied on my husband and Wendy's husband. That's where that I'm not expecting y'all to fight for me came from. But Candace had already made her mind up that she was quitting the goddamn show and I'm happy for her. I'm so motherfucking happy for her. So the other side of the couch and Mia and football head try to argue Candace down to ex to make her accept the fact that she's the reason why the fight happened and the fight wouldn't have happened had she not said what she said to Deborah and that she's the root of all evil and so on and so forth. And it's just like, bitch, I'd never take that. I got Jesus in my heart and my ancestors I talk to all the goddamn time. I'm not taking that. I wouldn't take it. She didn't take it. Because why is it that what I say is a problem, but what the rest of you motherfuckers say is not? She lied on somebody's husband and said he was, tried to make him out to be a creep. Lied on two women's husbands. And then took it a step further and allowed Gizzard to say that that man sexually assaulted her by grabbing on her behind without her permission. That's what the happened. So why is it that anything Candace said was detrimental to that woman when that woman had been threatening Candace because Candace didn't want to talk to her? Get the fuck out of my face.
y'all honestly could have kept this part, like, y'all could have kept this whole goddamn reunion, because y'all refused to hold the GEBs accountable, and refused to hold their minions accountable, but all, I mean, Ashley got held accountable, but y'all cut a lot of that out, because Wendy was ragtagging that ass, but y'all cut a lot of Ashley being held accountable out, but oh, Wendy and Candace have to be accountable for everybody else's bad motherfucking behavior, no the fuck they don't, and Karen, you on my list too, because last week with the colorist thing, you don't have the range to speak about colorism, because Wendy doesn't fit the aesthetic of the group, why doesn't she fit the aesthetic of the group, Karen? And then this time around, well, you explain to me why you picked up the bottle and you said what you said. I don't know what this woman was coming to do. That woman could have did anything. And if I have to grab anything to protect myself, I will. Because I'm not expecting anyone to fight for me because no one expected to get into a fight. Y'all know Candace don't fight. Y'all know I don't know if Candace can fight, but y'all know Candace is not a fighter. So y'all sick these people on her that y'all know will at least try to get try to put hands on her, and then you want to blame her because, oh, it's her mouth, oh, it's her mouth. Girl, get the fuck out of my face. Her mouth ain't did nothing worse than what the rest of y'all did. Some people like to claim that other people's husbands are uh, predators. Gizzard. Some people like to claim that the reason why someone had a miscarriage is because they were alcoholics. Football head. Some people like to say the people are broken horse from Hampton, Hampton University, and have a hot box that ended up in the mental, mental institution. Karen. Some people like to claim that, oh, because you said this about my mama, she gonna have a relapse, and it's just like, eh, that's not how that works. Mia. Some people like to call people's mothers witches. NECA. Some people like to sit up here and lie and scheme and plot to have they got going on in their homes because everything is not peaches and cream over there robin everybody has something going on everybody has said some egregious trash ass shit on this show what candace has said does not does not equate to someone trying to physically attack her Wendy didn't say nothing to you. She ate you up and you still ain't forgave her for it, Gizzard. But she ate you up accordingly. You tried to make it seem like she got plastic surgery in order to keep her husband. And she turned it back around on you to get the tummy tuck, keep that man. It, oh, it didn't. It didn't. Okay. Because I thought somebody said something. <sighs> Kiana says when um, old girl football head tries to apologize to her. Do I have it? I feel like I saved it. Did I save it? Oh, yes, I did. She says, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like Ashley is the queen of, you know, the aftermath apology. When it comes to these situations, I accept that you were big enough to apologize. And that's all I have to say. So here goes. She lies in aftermath. Why is it aftermath? Can, can I only say it in the aftermath? I can't say it during. And Keanu turns her and says, you're not proactive in general about causing a mess. That's my personal opinion. As in, during this entire situation, when it happened, when Keanu got busted open on her forehead and got into this whole fight and pulled down some stairs, when Candace and Wendy and Keanu got drinks thrown on them and your friend was all up in Candace's face, you were all for it. And you were blaming each and every one of them for why it happened. You didn't apologize for a motherfucking thing. But now here we are. Because you thought you were going to get away with it. And you thought they didn't have that audio. But everybody was still mic'd up. But now here we are. And you want to apologize for something. You plotted, you planned, and you schemed with your friend to do something to Candace. Whether it be throw a drink on her. Caused her to leave the event. I don't know. I don't particularly care. And it ended up with a physical altercation where someone was assaulted heavily and was cut on their face. Glass could have gotten that girl eye or anything else, and you wouldn't have motherfucking cared. So you are the queen of aftermath apologies, and that is everyone's opinion. Kiana thanks Karen for taking a ride with her to the ER. I also feel like Kiana doesn't like Ashley because when she was asked about all um how she felt about all the women on the show. She mentioned, you know, a slew of them, but Necker wasn't mentioned. Ashley wasn't mentioned. Hmm. Um, and Karen was like, you know, I would, I would do it for anyone. I would take that right to the ER with anyone. I would 
you know, take care of anyone who was ever physically assaulted or whatever. But it's just like, you didn't take care of Candace. You called HR on her. Karen, that fence is a little rickety. You might want to get up off of it before you fall. So wrapping up the season, Candace says that uh, Richard said the friendship is over. And if it's over, if there was ever any time that it was going to be something different, it, the ball is in her court. Wendy says, once again, I just want to know, what did I do to her? As in NECA, what did I do to you? You didn't do nothing. You apologize for the crackhead comment. But other than that, you didn't actually do anything. She's just going off of he said, she said. When it comes to what Lebe and your mother possibly talked about and what Lebe uh what is it? What am I thinking? What Lebe brought back to her. And honestly, I told y'all, Lebe was looking like real jealous of Neka when she went and sat with her. And my thing is, Lebe probably wanted to be on this show. And instead, it was Neka. Candace says, as it pertains to Gizzard, I've taken accountability. I have apologized from the bottom of my coochie. I've scratched. And I, listen, I would have said, and I had to dig to the very bottom. And even, listen, I've had to really like try to dig to the pits of my coochie to give her what she wanted. And then Gizzard catches an attitude with Candace once again and it's just like, girl, let it go. She didn't actually do anything to you. She apologized for what she said. But other than that, she and Wendy get the worst death threats I've ever seen. I've ever seen. And you were apologized to multiple times and she took accountability. And then here goes uh Gizzer. I can't wait for, you know, to see what I can't wait for this to air to see what uh is said on Twitter. And it's just like, oh yeah, what's said on Twitter? Boycott RHOP. There are two petitions going around to fire you fire your ass. Like um, I was one of the people who brought up those racial stereotypes and you know. Um, that clip from your little podcast on what you had to say about James Harden, like it's going around. People talking about how your daddy was a colorist. There are a lot of things you talk about. I, you know, speak what has been said on Twitter. You don't want to go on Twitter now. A lot of people believe that. Well, I do believe because y'all like to claim y'all are not on Twitter, but y'all are. But y'all are behind different pages. You seen what was said on Twitter, and you go cry about it in the car. But at the end of the day. It takes nothing. It really takes nothing to be a good person. It takes nothing to be a good person and actually treat people with kindness. I try to treat people with kindness all day, every day. Um, I try to treat myself with kindness all day, every day, even though sometimes it gets hard because I'm my worst critic. I try to treat everyone I get have an interaction with the best as possible. When I get on these reviews, this is my honest opinion about these situations based off of what I see on this show. Now, I don't know these women personally, so I can't say who they are personally. But what you give me on this show, I don't like. And people can say, well, it's just the show. No, production and the editors can only do with what you give. So if you are giving them bullshit and you are on bullshit, that's what they're going to edit together. Your bullshit. But based off this show, I can't like someone like you or a personality like you. Because you willingly set up here and tried to make someone out to be a predator. All because you misconstrued the plot and the narrative. You were trying to say that he's a cheater. Instead, you made him out to be a predator. Blaming someone for being assaulted when the person who should be blamed is your good business partner because she invited that woman to the event. It's so much more out of my face. Like you had it out for the, you had it out for Monique after she told you, no, I have four homes. Just getting another one. You had it out for Wendy after she got your ass back for trying to make it seem like she had plastic surgery to keep her man. And she said, no, that's not what it is. And she was eating you up accordingly because you decided to go after her. And that's your AKA sister. Obviously, the sisterhood not there if that's the way you're going to treat your sister that y'all done went through. If I live too long. Mm -hmm. Um... All the things you like, you who you treated Karen some awful. Season three didn't let up off of Karen. Karen had to have a breakdown on stage and leave for you to at least go after her. And even then, no one thought it was real. 
the stuff with Katie the first season, you never really liked Sharice, and you damn sure didn't like Sharice after the whole Sherman situation. So at the end of the day, I don't know what you want from us. I don't know why the people want us to like you so much, because you sit up here in line, you scheme, you plot, and you plan, only for it to really go nowhere and blow up in your face, for you to play this favoritism game with your boss so he doesn't hold you accountable, and then point out that Eric... The producer for RHOA and RHOP is the same producer for the seasons with OG on Basketball Wives. Enough said about that. And when I think about Iconic Housewives, Gizzard isn't up there. There's nothing iconic about her. Moving on. So updates that have been given. Candace, by her own, uh, on her own, left the show when... Andy said, hopefully we can have a productive season nine. Candace had a look on her face like, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to be here. Candace left on her own. Andy said Candace left on her own. She threw up the deuces, chucking up the deuces. Get the fuck out of my face. I don't want to be here no more. So, it has been announced today that Robin has been fired. And Robin, Richard, decided to take some pot shots at someone. Let me see if y'all know who she's taking shots at. Yes, I will not be returning for season nine. The Real Housewives of Potomac Dixon 45 said, It's reality. The network did not invite me back. I was fired for the lack of better words. I'm not, I will not sugarcoat the situation. The situation is say, Oh, I'm walking away and this is a break or anything like this. This is a network decision. You try to take shots at Candace for Candace saying she walked away when your boss said that Candace walked away on her own. You got fired. And oh, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus walked, when Jesus walked. Talking about happy days. Oh, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Listen, where is the little boy from Sister Act 2? I need him to hit that high note. Oh, happy day. We're talking about happy days. Listen, she <laughs> is gone, okay? Listen, I don't ever want to celebrate nobody losing their job because I wouldn't want nobody celebrating me losing my job. But in the time that you get on a reality TV show and decide that I'm not going to share my life and the public doesn't deserve to know my life. And even though I'm getting a hefty check from the network, they're not going to get my life either. I'm going to sell it behind a Patreon paywall for $5 a pop. Then you deserve to lose your job. If you don't want to share your life and if you don't want to give what you signed up to give, then no job for you. No job. Time on my hands since I ask got fired. I ain't got no plans. No, no, no. No, don't, 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 don't. She's out of the show. We ain't got to deal with her no more. It's so late, slowly making me happy. Oh, oh, she is out of a job. Mm. She is out of a job. She's out of a job, baby. Richard Dixon is gone. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 she's gone. Oh, 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 do, 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 do. Why'd you have to say goodbye? We wanted to kick you out, but now that you is fired, everything's gonna go right. She's out of a job. Mm. She's out of a job. Yes, she's out of a job. Baby, the whole world's all right now. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I didn't practice.
prayed for her to lose her job. Some people said they prayed for days like this, but I didn't. I was just like, well, it makes logical sense that she would be fired. On top of that, girl, BravoCon got canceled. And I'm like, y'all canceled it because y'all don't want people to pee on y'all asses. But <laughs> even if y'all cancel BravoCon for 2024, 2025 is still going to give what 2024 did not give. One more time for the people in the back. She's out of a job. Mm. She's out of a job. Mm. She's out of a job. Uh -huh. That'll teach you not to share your life, Robin. Hello, speaking to speaking to the dumbbell. You you didn't want to share your life, huh? Oh, didn't want to share a life. So you know what? She's out of a job. Yeah. Bye bye. Will I miss Robin? I will not. Well, I miss calling her Richard Nixon. I don't particularly care because I call her Richard Nixon anytime I want. Will I miss seeing her on my screens? No. I'm still in mourning though because, you know, Candace left, but it's okay because she left for good reasons, which tells me there's a reason why she was crying. Like, we thought that she was on uh, the hormone, like, the like she was doing, like, the IVF, and she was, like, her hormones and all that stuff was why she was crying so much. But now confirmation. Let's get into it. Nessa's allegedly fired? I heard that she had begged them to give her a second season. But she got fired, too? My God. She is out of a job listen 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 linda you had every opportunity to make this your season to really come and stunt on the girls like you claim because you said your daddy was a rich bitch and he made you a rich bitch too and we didn't see none of that but what we did see was your unfinished house now i don't like to talk listen i'm not gonna talk about people's homes because i don't own my own home um but I wouldn't have brought them people up into my home. I don't have no stove. I don't have no sink. And not everything's put together. And you invite them people over to your home, not knowing the energy you're bringing up in there. To unpack your wedding gifts from a year. Mm. Okay. Let's see what this article says. And then we're going to move on to the happy news. Oh, happy day. The Jasmine brand exclusively reports that NECA has allegedly been fired from Real Housewives of Potomac after her first season. She is now allegedly the third person from season eight who will not be returning for season nine. On Monday, which is today, Richard announced on her reasonably um, tacky podcast that she was also fired from the hit Bravo show. You know, allegedly NECA is out too. I don't feel bad about it. And now let's get on to the grain. Hold on, before I get into the good stuff, let's see everything I missed. Okay, I read that. Um, just simply, I'm African and I was extremely offended with what NECA has said about Wendy's mother. A lot of people were. You notice Ike face when his wife is talking. He wasn't feeling anything she said. I wouldn't either. Also, I'm going to just say this. When Andy broke it down as to why or the reason why um, they wanted Wendy to bring Neck on the show, Ike's face looked all crazy. So you knew nothing about this. See, y'all got to get y'all lives together. Calling someone a witch and accusing them of witchcraft in my culture is very taboo and dangerous. It is. It is. It is. Definitely is. I'm never gonna lie about that one. How is she gonna ice Nick out when she's being iced out herself? That is the that's the million dollar question. Two of Ashley's friends attack K and she's still on the show. I hope mm, it makes no sense to me. Applehead needs to go as well. Mm -hmm. My precious doesn't want to give up the lifestyle, so she is going to be caught in her own prison. Listen, if that's what she want to do, that's what she's going to do. Once again, worst sugar baby on the face of the planet. That's what I have to say. She did look like she was going to the gym. She did look like she was going to the gym. I knew Neckbone may, I knew Neckbone may be fired because of the Essence article. She is pissed off the African community. Hey, she want to piss off her community? You go right ahead. That is not my problem. 
Neca ruined her first time on the show herself. She did. No one else did it. She ruined it herself. Neca let Lebe gas her up so they both could end up on the show, only for her to end up fired. And I just want to point out that this is the way. Hold on. Let me find it. This ain't the campfire song now. Hold on. Let me find it. Look at how Lebe was looking at her. Hold on. Did it come up? It didn't come up. Did it come up? Y'all see how Lebe is looking at her? Look at how she's looking at her. Y'all see this, right? Lebe is sitting right here. Look at how she's looking at her. Y'all see the way she's looking at her, right? I want everybody to tell me what exactly does the, the, look at how she's looking at her. What does that look give? Because to me, it's given envious. It's given I am a hater. It's given this was supposed to be my seat and you in my seat and I want it. I want it. That's what it gives. Look at the way she's looking at her. You talking about Wendy and you let the ops in your home. The ops is low key related to you. But okay, Miss Girl. Mm. Now let's go to one Candace Dillard. Instagrams. Tell me how great I am with words. Surprisingly, though, when the time came, the perfect words just didn't exist. so far so that means that candace was definitely pregnant during the filming of the reunion and that's possibly another reason other than the fact that you know production probably said something to her that she didn't go as hard as she could because she was trying not to stress herself out that also explains why she was crying so much during that damn reunion I just want to say congratulations to Candace and Chris. Even though, Candace, I'm going to miss you. I do want to let the damn show to have a healthy, happy, healthy pregnancy. Especially with these people who don't wish you no good. I mean, Wendy loves you. Kiana loves you. Um, Karen's a fence right now. It's not for, but the rest of them, no. I wouldn't want that energy. I would not. Mm -mm, wouldn't want that energy. But congratulations. You definitely deserve it. I love, I'm so happy for them. This journey is going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. And having a baby. I look like it. Listen, definitely was pregnant during that reunion. You know, babies are a blessing. Oh, she's having a baby. Babies are so cute. But you, you will not trick me. I can't afford one of those. And um, I'm not even ready for one of those in my life. I'm fine being an auntie and a cousin. <laughs> well, Candace is having a baby. Aw, this is so sweet. It's so sweet. So, Candace is 16 weeks, which means she was pregnant before the reunion. So, she was definitely pregnant during the reunion. And I think she had an inkling in the back of her mind that she, it, it was such a cute announcement. It was. She probably had an inkling in the back of her mind that, you know, maybe this ain't the healthiest space for me to be in while I'm pregnant. Only for the reunion to go the way it was and finally make her decision. So, you know what? I get it. And this is why when it was time for Chris to step up and be her mouthpiece, he stepped up and was her mouthpiece and got the girls together. Oh, they're having a baby. Ah. 
I love this for them. I do. She having a baby. You know what? I'm not gonna be, be wanna be, be uh, I'm not gonna be one of them people like, hey Barb, hello, hello, hello. I'm not gonna be one of them people like, oh, I knew it. No, I didn't know it. Um, I had a thought of maybe they were going doing another round of IV uh, with how like much she was crying. So I thought, oh, she's on the hormones again. And now, you know, she's very emotional. But this explains it. And then as we were getting to this last episode of, like, the reunion, I was like, um, I follow Candace on Instagram. And Candace has been doing, like, a lot of stories from, like, the, like, the chest up or from the neck up. She really hadn't been like doing like full body poses or anything, which she didn't have to. So I was like, hmm. And then I talked myself out of it. But oh, she's having a baby. I'm team healthy baby. I don't care, boy, girl, it's not my child, but I'm team healthy baby. I think this is Dot's first grandchild. Crystal, I don't think this sister Crystal has any kids. Crystal living her best, uh, her best life. Okay, no kids. Okay, this is Dot's first grandchild. Dot is definitely doing backflips. Okay, Dot has retired the purses. She's doing backflips. And then Bravo confirmed on their own website that it was Candace's decision to leave. Oh, Candace is having a baby. That trumps everything else. Congratulations, Candace. Um, you deserve every good thing in life you do i pray for you and chris to have a happy healthy baby you know now don't do no crazy gender reveals okay we like to keep it safe to earth safe to earth but y'all deserve it it's a beautiful family i don't want to cry you know baby announcements are so cute and theirs was cute but she's 16 weeks, and it look like it's going to be a big baby. So y'all pray for her, because you know she, Candy Girl, Candy Land, she a tiny little thing. She real tiny, okay? Chris make big babies. It look like it. And it explains why she was so emotional during that damn reunion. Now what the girls going to say about her? They ain't got nothing to say. And with that being said, Happy news all around. Candace is pregnant, having a baby. Robin is fired. Decca's allegedly fired. The only other thing y'all could do to make this even better is to fire Ashley and Gizzard and use to revamp the whole goddamn show. Yes, claiming, uh, claiming Candace got fired when Bravo themselves said she didn't get fired. Andy said he didn't get fired. Everybody was surprised about her leaving. But at the end of the day, the real ones win. And Candace is a real one. So, like I said, congratulations, Candace and Chris. Happy days and happy news for all around. Um, and to finish this off, if y'all thought Potomac was going to last, yes, mom's roommate will forever be a hater. Well, if y'all thought Potomac was going to last for just Gizzard, it wasn't. And if Anybody says, oh, Gizzard won. She won. She got Candace off the show. Candace made the best decision she ever could have done for herself and her baby was to leave that damn show. This wasn't a, she finally pushed me off the show, which a lot of people thought it was. No, it was a, I'm making this decision for me and my baby to leave this damn show before anything possibly bad could happen because most of these women don't wish good upon me. So that's an amazing thing. But the only thing gizzard has managed to do yes we need kiana full-time uh wendy karen we could we could keep me uh, get rid of the gevs the only thing gizzard managed to do was drive this show into the ground and if there's another show next season we'll see what happens but i doubt it <laughs> 
She probably do got the ballroom for the baby shower already rented out. We're already planning a baby shower, okay? We're going to have two. We're going to do one at Potomac. We're going to do... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kiana's over it, too, because how are you going to blame me for being assaulted? You know what? I give Candace a baby shower special. Give her a baby shower special. Or give her a special leading up to, you know, delivery. And we get to see um, Kiana and we get to see Wendy be there for her and her family and all that great stuff. That's what we would like to see. None of the mother women. Y'all can keep it. Y'all keep it. I wonder who knew Candace was pregnant. Hey, Kenny, I wonder who... And I don't know if I said hi to Barb, but hi, Barb. I wonder who knew Candace was pregnant because remember they did, um, her and Wendy were doing the press tour together for the show. Um, and then her, Wendy, Karen, and Kiana went out for dr dinner and drinks after. Like, obviously she told her family, but when it comes, she obviously didn't tell the GEBs and the Minions, but I wonder if at least Wendy knew because they were doing a press tour together. I Listen, I'm not going to say, oh, yes, yeah, she had to know. I'm not saying that. But I wonder who else, like, other than her family knew. But congratulations. Congratulations. I feel like if anyone, like, knew, it would have been uh, Wendy and Kiana and possibly Karen. I felt like that. But congratulations. Oh, babies are so cute. But you, you cannot trick me. Okay, all the people who want to post pictures of the cute little chunky babies without no teeth and just be smiling. No, no, no. Yeah, I think maybe Wendy had figured it out. Um, I think she's over it, too. I, I would be over it. I got assaulted. Oh, no, you can't do that no more. But once again, Kiana, girl, you do good work because no scar whatsoever. No scar in sight. Good work. DMV area, y'all better hit her up. Yes, Candace is pregnant. She is a pregnant. Okay, Kenny, you missed it. So, Kenny, I'm going to just run it down to you. Candace is pregnant, and she decided to leave the show on her own, confirmed by herself, Bravo, and Andy. Robin is fired, and Robin tried to take shots at Candace, but it ain't going to work. Um, NECA is allegedly fired, and next up on the chopping block should be either Gizzard or Ashley or both. Oh, so we didn't get that. Okay, so about Kate. In the extended version on Peacock, she called out Giselle for not having her check, not for never having checked on her after the fight. And Wendy Cand uh and Wendy and Candace hit her with the simultaneously told you so. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, it was strategic. You tried to make it out to seem like they were bad friends on that trip, only for Hey cutie, hello, hello, hello. You tried to make it seem like they were bad friends on the trip, only for you to be a, you're not even really friends with her, but to be a bad friend to her after the whole fight. And she had to end up in the ER and Karen, Wendy and Candace and Kiana were in the ER until like 4 a.m. Yeah, so that makes all the sense of the world. She don't give a damn about that lady. She never did. I mean, if they want the show, like, if they want to continue with the show, they're going to have to get rid of her because no one likes her. There was a reason why BravoCon was canceled. They could say the reason they canceled BravoCon was because of budgeting or da-da-da-da-da. No. Last year, they got Gizzard and uh, Richard got booed, and this year, they was going to get booed. Or you was going to have to bulk up security with how crazy people are now these days. It was never going to work out in their favor. Oh, yeah, they would. But with that being said, I don't know if y'all want me to do, like, an open panel type thing or um, a, like, a call-in type thing maybe later on. I don't know if that's something y'all want to do. Let me know. But we can do it if y'all want to. But we have good news all around. Candace, had a, Candace is having a baby. Neck and Robin are fired. Oh, happy days are here again, okay? I feel like the world's going to change. I feel like job opportunities just going to roll all up and through. Yes.
Echo Does Radio said she hopes that all the cast is going to reach out to Candace and congratulate her on the baby, you know, because of the sisterhood they have. I doubt it. <laughs> yes, congratulations, Candace. With that being said, that was it. That was all. I don't have more to give y'all. If y'all want a call in or anything, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll see y'all later. Um, eventually I'm gonna do a oh, also made an announcement. Real Housewives of Potomac. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I said I was going to make my announcement by the end of this, and we at the end of this, other than the fact that, you know, we're going to bring some people up and see what they got to say. Oh, we're no longer doing Real Housewives of Potomac over here. Okay? The only way for Real Housewives of Potomac to be done over here is for Ashley and Gidget to be fired, and we're going to revamp the whole thing. Other than that, no more. No more, no more, no more. Baby, I'm going to do you right. His eyes done. Oh, thank you. I thank you so much. I love, ooh, warm my spirit. Thank you, cutie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Eyes done. Eyes through. Eyes is tired. That is damn sure. Not sent the link. Let me change the layout. If anybody else wants to come up, there's the link. Hello? Can you hear me? I am now. Okay, my pause wasn't working. Rob. Oh, Rob. You had a moment this morning to explain yourself. Hopefully, tell us what you and Ra, uh, Juan were going to do for money now that you both have been fired. And you instead took that time to try to win the people back and endear them to your plight of unemployment to throw a shot at Candace through your tears. And Bravo themselves confirmed that it was Candace's choice to leave. Not only that, while you were crying this moment in agony, Candace was probably crying tears of joy at this pregnancy announcement. You know, you went out like the hater and loser you are. And um, I hate that for Cain and Abel having two parents such as yourselves and you and Rob, uh, Juan. You know, it, it sucks. All that time and investment your parents put into you only for you to turn out like this. It's awful for you, <laughs> not for us. We're glad to see you go. So my sidearm. She really went out like a hater. Like I heard that this morning and through my laughter, I was like, why is she making this about Candace? Like, why is she taking this time as her ship sinks to throw this shot at Candace? It is not Candace's fault that you got fired. Ma'am, you get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to be on this show. And you decided to keep, it's one thing to keep your life private and not give it to anybody because I can be honest and say nearly every housewife does that. There's mm -hmm. literally things that they just aren't willing to share on TV. But you can't say, okay, I'm not going to share it. Listen, I'm going to tell you, because see, you know, you and I talk all the time and people don't be privy to these conversations. Guys, this is what you cannot do. You cannot go work for Popeyes or for KFC and say, I'm not frying chicken today. I'm not frying no chicken. I don't care what you say. I'm not frying no chicken. But then go home and fry chicken and sell plates out your house. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. <laughs> and then it's still expect to have a job and a paycheck. You can't tell the people you're not frying chicken. And then, but you go, I'm only frying chicken at my house if I keep all the money. I'm not frying chicken for y'all. I'm going to just sit here and watch everybody else fry chicken and sell chicken. You can't do that. You can't. Um. It's nobody's fault but her own. Her and Juan. Yeah, y'all refuse to show y'all lives. You said your marriage wasn't for sale. And there's a difference between you and uh, Dr. Heavenly, which somebody tell, get Heavenly online and ask her about this whole married Girl. medicine. 
because if heavenly say that's a lie or if she don't know then that means you've been watching my videos talk about she was asking people keep people keep you no, know she definitely been watching your videos because I, I think she pulled that up out of you because you've been the only person saying that she should have joined the merit the medicine cast because her husband's a traveling doctor and they could have easily went to atlanta they really could have um mm -hmm. truth be told though i i see a lot of people trying to compare what robin did to what heavenly does it's not the same it's heavenly is not giving information about her marriage on her youtube channel heavenly is not telling us anything about that marriage not anything beyond the surface nothing beyond the surface when she says my marriage is not for sale it's not for sale on patreon because i'm a member it's not for sale on youtube and it's not for sale on bravo robin said my marriage is not for sale to her bosses that pay her hundreds of thousands of dollars to to talk about her marriage but mm -hmm. then sold it for five dollars behind a the paywall there's a big difference in what happened and it's not I'm the same there's no comparison between the two and you didn't make a big payday off of that Patreon because what maybe three content creators paid for it and then was giving the information out to their friends. Like literally, they it, it was it was pointless for them to do that. Like even the views that they got on Reasonably Shady wasn't worth like you you messed up your main job for your side job. Indeed. And you still even though y'all had that win over him in court, y'all still in a lawsuit with uh, Eminem over Shady. Y'all are still in a lawsuit with that man over the word Shady. And as many people say, well, he can't own the word. He actually does in certain ways as it comes to trademarking. And also, there's a reason why he's doing this. Now, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, his daughter has a podcast and he doesn't want, like, he's doing it to keep them off the air. I think he don't want to be associated like he don't want them being associated with his brand and yeah he put the time and built up the brand and i'm not gonna hold you the way they do gna it's very similar to like gma good morning america yep even down to the logo i think i think they have a, i mean the common denominator is giselle i think they have a history of kind of seeing what somebody else does and copying it even the whole athleisure line i'm sorry but you cannot tell me that it's not a replica of what sheree was doing with she about sheree it's it literally is. that <laughs> They they really they very much a copycats and can't even take what they do seriously because truth be told, um you don't take them seriously in life. Yeah, and true, I, I I know we on circles, but just thinking about that, what I just said about Giselle, I don't like the fact that Wendy keeps getting flack for her lack of focus when we've seen Giselle start many businesses that make no sense. Every hue, she wrote a book. <laughs> She wrote a book. We've never heard anything about it. She ain't wrote no follow up, no sequels, no nothing. She had a book in the early seasons. She wrote a fictional book loosely based about her experiences with Jamal. I don't know. They must not been good. No, but I mean, you know what? And it's funny too because, girl, you know I'm into books. You know I be reading. You know I be reading. Yeah. So the year that she wrote that book, she was nominated for, if I'm not mistaken, the NAACP Image Award. And let me calm down. She was nominated in the category with other real writers, one being Eric Jerome Dickey, who shortly passed after the nomination. So you know I feel away about that. Yeah. Because she won. And she clearly won because of her name. Like at that point, you know, they were trying to get some um, views to the to the NWCB Image Award, trying to take it back off of Bravo. So what I'm saying, oh, Barb, I ain't gonna hold it against you, girl. I ain't gonna hold it against you. I told y'all if y'all want to know what went down between Giselle and and, and um, Pastor Jamal Bryant, you know the people, the rumors, the word cutie, the people, hey. the the rumors, the word on the street. The word on the street is the book by Kimberla Lawson Roby. Shout out, shout out to the girls that read. Is loosely based about Pastor Jamal Bryan and his antics when he was over there preaching in Baltimore. Um, that's always been the rumor since the 2000s. So Kenny, don't you start your mess. Oh, Kenny, hey y'all. What the people say. Hi, Kenny. Hi. Oh. Candace is pregnant. 
Mm-hmm. She's pregnant. Oh. Yes, she is. Yes. Big okay. belly, belly full of baby. Sixteen weeks. Oh. Look like so baby. that's probably why she was crying so much during the reunion, for sure. I I yeah. said that we we talked about that, and I said she either is on hormones or she's pregnant. But I was I was suspicious that she was pregnant yeah. because she was okay. So I'm not in the baby algorithm because I ain't got no baby. But <laughs> y'all know, shout out to Nisi Dixon. Congratulations, Nisi, if you ever come across this video. Yeah. But Nisi was in her video saying that because she just had a baby recently, and she's mm-hmm. in the baby. Um, you know, the mm-hmm. I love children algorithm. Candace mm-hmm. was clicking the like button on a lot of posts and content on IG within mm-hmm. that same space. So it's either you're planning for something or you got mm-hmm. something coming. Yeah. I yeah. had a feeling she was pregnant, but obviously all the cry- like Candace was crying. They they made it a point to point it out when it wasn't her segments, but when, when they were talking to Giselle. But if you pay close attention, she was emotional throughout the entire reunion. Every she time was. somebody else was talking, she was like constantly fighting back tears. Them hormones been kicking. She, she was reminding me of me. I'm a crier. I am a crier. I cry when I get mad. I cry when um, I can't take control of my emotions. And so it's not even an ugly cry or even um, I'm not even like that. It just like tears were like literally I could be in the same tone talking the exact same way I'm right now, but tears will be falling down mm-hmm. um, yep. because I'm such an empath. And um, so, you know, people kept saying, I'm so mad. Candace then, you know, cuss Giselle out, you know, or whatever, you know, she was you know what? So, and I, we definitely know why, because yeah, hormones are they they weird like that. They will knock you knock you off your square every time. And the more you try to take hold of it, you can't. <laughs> yeah. You just really cannot. There, there's this, something that is really uncontrollable that you can't. Help. And she was also in a pressure cooker the entire reunion. The Come entire reunion was a pressure cooker for her, and it just was. They they didn't get that many breaks. She's constantly like they made that entire uh like I know a lot of people felt like Mia deserved that first seat. I thought so too until the reunion aired. Mm-hmm. They they everything became about Candace, even when it wasn't about Candace. It's all she Candace's deserved fault. that first seat once again. They put so much emphasis on Candace and what she does, even when she was nonverbal. There was emphasis on cam- Candace. They were constantly that. putting that camera on Candace. It's like, well, you might as well give it a first seat if you're gonna make it all about her. What she did? Yeah, I had no. I didn't even think about it like that. That Candace should, yeah. could have and should have been in the in the in the seat next to. Um, why is Karen? Why was Karen close to? Um, and they and usually, and- you know, typically on these shows, they usually put like the anchor. In this mm-hmm. case, they consider two people to be the anchors on Potomac. They typically uh-huh. take up space. Karen has not always had the first seat through each reunion, but Giselle has. This is the first season Giselle mm-hmm. has not sat directly next and to this was Thank good. God for small favors because she didn't need to sit in. Oh, she I don't care what kind of eye candle, hey, eye candle they think she is. She did not need to ever sit next to But this was, the, um, this was the season of them popping her on her hand. We're going along with uh, Richard Nixon and them schemes and plots to hide uh, what that man was over yeah. there doing to her. And I do. So, um, I think the reason why she made the point to forge a, a stronger connection to Karen is mm-hmm. I think Giselle. I think Giselle knew the writing was on the wall because as hard as her and Robin tried to hide it, they did have some tension this year, of and course, I think the tension. Yeah. The tension being the whole thing with the paywall behind one, I think they both caught a lot of heat behind the scenes with production. And I think she was trying to get Robin to give and Robin wouldn't give. And you know, the whole thing about one was yelling at her and stuff. And I think mm-hmm. it created some um, disconnect between the two of them. But they still have to work together, they have reasonably shaped. Um, I do think it's weird that she went into business with Ashley as opposed to Robin because I'm sorry, but I'm more likely to buy as leisure wear from Robin. I know for a fact Robin probably even willing to go to bed at night as yep. opposed to Ashley. I feel like Giselle, I know. Don't you feel like Giselle is using Ashley at this point with that? 
Yes. Because Ashley's really the workout person. She's the one. I mean, we ain't really seen the girl. No yeah. girl Robin, not Robin. Ashley got the seed money. She got access to yeah. Michael's course, money. She's going to swipe that credit card and rub it. Michael's feet. Yeah, she can't afford to go Giselle to bed. Is using, Giselle is using Ashley. Girl, you ain't got well, she, you, you know what? Shut and up. it's so funny too. I can't remember if they played this on the show, but on on the Peacock version, I watched it this morning. Mm -hmm. She actually talked about being in business with the two of them. The difference is, is that Robin is Robin is tight with the budget down to the mm -hmm. penny. At any given moment, she can tell. She said her exact words. She can tell you exactly down to the penny what um what um amount is in the um reasonably shady um account. But with mm. Ashley, regardless of what the budget is, Ashley will blow the budget wide open. And then well, she'll just step back and let Ashley do her thing with the budget because it gives me right. She's funding it. Right. But here's the other thing on that, too, is the fact that uh, um, with, with you saying that, the reason why Robin is that way is because she lost a lot of money. Remember? Yeah. She lost all that money from mm -hmm. Juan. So she, she got a penny pinch, make sure every cent is counted for because she is not going to let what happened to her happened to her again, which cool girl, for that. The way Juan be over there cussing her out, girl. girl. She trying and to get cussed out by Juan again. And Juan, honestly, can go, go, Juan can go suck on a hard boiled egg. Juan ain't, they ain't putting no fear in nobody's heart. I bet you Robin. Boy. I bet you Robin a boil it and peel it for him. I, I, she might, but I bet you she also knows that she's the breadwinner. And I bet you she still be looking at him to the side, like, yeah, you keep talking, bro. You keep talking. The only problem is no. if, they, if they divorce. He will be able to get that money because so, he's used to a good lifestyle. I have, a question. I have yes. a question for y'all. I have a question for the people. Now okay. that she's officially fired, mm -hmm. how long y'all think they're gonna last? And listen, for the people in the back, no, no one's wishing harm or you know, divorce on nobody. But he don't like her. He been caught. It's a good question. It's a he's reasonable been caught question. On too many hot mics saying he don't like her. And he was on the phone with Coach Free. Hey babe, what you doing? And just a cheesing of, girl face, just, just I ain't never seen one that happy. One was so happy, I was happy for him. This is him, just on the <laughs> phone with her. And then when asked, because remember, they was going on a couple's date before he hopped, like they was going on a couple's date with big uh La Cienega and Gordon. When she asked him who he was talking to, he lied to her. So the question is, how long do y'all think they'll stay married now that she's fired? I have a theory, I thought on it. Sorry, y'all. I don't see, I don't, I can't picture a space where one files for divorce. Is he filed for divorce? Oh, I, one gives me, I'm, we're going to stay legally married for the kids. We're just going to live our separate lives. I, I don't think he'll file for divorce, but I think he will drive. Because you know what it is, though? One is so indebted to her and her family. He feels so obligated to her because of the boys. Because that, that brother and sister? Oh, go because ahead. he don't want to. He don't want to be the one to initiate it, but I do believe that he will drive Robin crazy enough to the point where she would want to leave, which is what he did the first time. But he went, he's not going to initiate a divorce. So I think if they ever do break up, it's going to be because Robin has to file again. But Robin is so invested in proving us wrong. Uh huh. She would rather hide the fact that they're not really together like that than for her to go and be happy. Outside of their relationship, girl, don't try to prove me wrong. I want everybody to be happy and live their best lives. And if it's not married to a person who you, he just said multiple times on hot mics that he's sick of you, then don't let it be that you don't let your husband step in the way of your happiness. Not only that, but who gets, who gets who gets married and after the after the wedding they walking down the the little you know the little uh, oh whatever. It's like, and, and you flip, flip, flip everybody off, like girl. A, first a loser, a loser. Because you, you made that about us. You made that about yeah. us, and it wasn't about hello. us. Like, hello, and that's to me. That's gonna be your downfall. You so worried about us and flipping us off when you should be putting your all your concerns on your husband and what hell he did. So I, when she did that, I said, girl, that you you, you might have did that to the mirror. Right. You just it's, a loser. It's, it's, you're just a loser, baby. You're just a loser. For sure. For sure. But you, but you know what, though, Kenny? Baby. It's all right. You're just a loser. But you know what it is, though, Kenny? You're right. But peep the timeline, though. That's around the time them boys become become um, of age. That's around the time. I don't see them breaking up while they're still young. One already told us if it weren't for these kids, I'd be gone. <laughs> oh. 
Well, I really, yeah. I really think if a divorce happens, they're going to wait until those children are turned eighteen. Which to me is just like you're doing more. That's a harm. waste. You're mm -hmm. doing more harm. Robin than has wasted her entire like. I, cutie, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Renty. I need you to understand. Robin has wasted her time. The biggest mistake Robin could have ever made in was this married. relationship. It's not. No, not marry him. No, the biggest, him. The biggest, the biggest mistake she made was divorcing that man and not separating her life from him. There was no point in her filing for divorce that they were going to live in the same house and she was going to continue being his partner in everything. If you still cooking, you still clean, he's still coming home to a clean house, he's still coming home to a well-managed household, as managed as possible despite the financial issues. You working, you still putting your money together with his, trying to get yourselves out of a financial hole. There was no point in you filing for a divorce. On top of that, that let him know what you ain't leaving for real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm also at this. I would never, ever, ever in my life openly and honestly and happily admit that I was swallowing the cum of a known alleged serial cheater. You don't forget she let us know that. No one needed to know that. That's you, know, you know why she did that though, Ranting? You know why she did, that? she did that? For, she did that for Juan. She wanted, she, she, she was trying to figure out a way that to to be like well Ron, when i'm on on, on um reality tv i'm not always dogging you out you know i also have times where I, you know i share with the girls you know the good time and swallowing is one of her good times that's what she thinks you know so she's but like oh, let me, let me it, it didn't even it didn't even sound nasty you know how some people be like oh girl that's nasty i kind of you know it wasn't it even give it didn't even give that it didn't even give that it gave desperado um, on your I, knees begging I, and pleading. The fact that they were on TV, it'd been different if they had this conversation and it wasn't on TV. The fact that you would say that on television was like you was really trying trying to have a moment, but that's not a good moment to have. Nobody wants to hear that you swallowing children. Nobody wants to hear that, even if it's your husband. We, I don't want to hear that. I wouldn't tell y'all that, and. I don't care the nastiest person on our planet. Nobody wants to hear that. That's something you keep to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Keep some things in your bedroom. Everybody whether, like, you know whether you've decided to swallow or take a pop shot to the face, aka get away Christmas. We don't want to know. We don't. We don't. We don't. Really don't. Keep some things in your bedroom. Just like you should have kept in your bedroom that that man is a C-U-C-K-H-O-L-D. You should have probably kept that in your bedroom too. <laughs> Wow. Just, and, but you know the sad part is, is that she thinks sharing stuff like that with us is her giving girl production once as opposed to like telling us what's really going on with you and this man how how are you adjusting to quote unquote because I still we ain't never seen the paperwork that them two is really married seeing uh, how are you adjusting to being married again what changes have happened now that you guys are legally bindingly together do you still feel guilt about losing the money do you still which is always still so weird to me who makes it an investment and still, still puts all the money I think she lying about that I ain't gonna hold y'all because to Typically, let's say you work for hundred thousand dollars. No, let me let me. Your hundred there. Let's say we're happy, right? Mm -hmm. You 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 know you a good thousand there. You earn like half a million, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out why are you investing your entire life savings into a business plan that you're not going to see any payout of for a while. Nobody does that. Like if if you were if you were five hundred thousand, you might invest one hundred, maybe even mm -hmm. two hundred. But nobody invests every single thing that they own. You still got to keep up with your day to day. And typically, when you make an investment, get an immediate return. Uh -huh. I don't trust the. Sasha probably was gambling or something. Who knows? Allegedly, you know they love to. Sue. Who knows what the uh, real story is? I don't trust the situation because I don't get investing your entire life savings into anything. But then again, that's logic. I'm going to put that on the shirt. Logic and lies. They don't mix. I mean, if you work that much money, do you know how much do you know how much trouble they take you through just the empty out? When you have that much money in one of those like um, mm -hmm. high frequency yielding uh, bank accounts or whatever, mm -hmm. they take you through mm -hmm. so many changes to take five dollars out. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I don't think she took all of it out. And hopefully she's smart enough to put a nest egg away from herself. You know what I'm saying? Because when you go down to zero with your husband, <laughs> you go down to zero, 
I would hope that you learn your lesson and that you say, you know what? Um, just like was <laughs> with Angela Bassett. Remember when Angela Bassett? Oh, was I think something about America. I've been to the back. And 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 the husband had lost all the money. He had been holding. Thank he had you her. for thinking of your children. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's like you also have to be thinking about, yeah, you can think about y'all as a family unit, but you also got to be thinking about you by yourself, knowing that you guys were divorced before, that you guys didn't work out and he got back with you. So you should actually have two accounts that's moving money and one he doesn't have to particularly know about. And I'm not saying, you know, wives or husbands keep something away from your husband or whatever, but as women, our mothers, and fathers always say, look, you always got to keep you a little something, something to the side. You got to. That's just that's just smart business. As I'm women, a, that's what we have to do. Um, so I'm hoping that Robin did that because if she didn't and she doesn't and she thinks it's OK for Juan to know everything, girl, uh, <laughs> you like know, a lot. I'm as much as I'm an advocate of everybody having their own accounts. If you mm -hmm. want to mix finances, that is up to you. But you can have stuff. Doing yeah, good. we already saw what happened with Gavin and Patricia when they was mixing business fin finances and he wanted her book money. We saw what that was. He wanted all the book money, not even just a little bit. He wanted all the book money. Um, I'm an advocate of having your own accounts because you never know when you got to turn a window into a door. Come on now. Come like on now. Fine. Prayers <laughs> for the Gobadius. Prayers for the Gobadius. You never know when you got to turn a window into a look, door. Look, let me take my kiss, my rosary. <laughs> yes, and if you got to turn that window into a door, you better have you something. <laughs> you ready to go? You you better have you your own space. Listen, I had a family member. I mean, they married now, and she ain't watching my stuff. I don't even think she remember when I was a kid. Um, she had a house with her kids and her man. Um, but she also had a second home. She was renting it out, but she also had a second That's home. Income. That ain't yeah. never <laughs> but like she but he didn't know about it but she like she was renting it out and putting the money into a different like another account for her and it's just like you always have to once again never know when you got to turn a window into a door never know if you like you never know if a situation is going to turn bad or not you don't know what the situation will ever be but you got to have you something or a few something for, the, for the rainy day what is kimmy what kimmy, kimmy nicole what you talking about when you say um da, 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 da. oh when will football head make up her announcement? What are we talking about? She's, what football she's head? Not. When when she's not going anywhere. She'll she look she proud of Wait, what? She's supposed y'all y'all think she's supposed to be or thinking about leaving, and y'all think she's not leaving. Is that what we're talking about? I think I don't I, know what's gonna happen. Um, they made a lot of changes. I think truly original probably got rid of some of the people that was producing Potomac. They're bringing oh, other people in, and mm -hmm. they and they have a different vision mm -hmm. for what Potomac's gonna look like. I think they got a little shake up from Bravo. It's that Essence article did them in. I think yeah. it's that I don't think. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the outrage on Twitter and social media plays a factor, mm -hmm. but that Essence article draw a lot of negative unwanted attention. And, and this time, I'll say this though: in terms of the whole boycott RHOP, this time mm -hmm. is different. We talked about the proper way to boycott a show. I participated yes. in successful boycotts. Okay. And unlike the one that they were trying to do with Love and Marriage Huntsville, it's not just about not watching the show. Um, I've tough. seen people circulating who the sponsors are. Yep. And how to contact the sponsors and what to do. They are mobilizing in a way that's actually effective. So um, they kind of have to take notice this time. And they're seeing some shakeups. Yeah. So now my question say, is, a nice little shakeup there. My, now, there's also rumors that Wendy is gone too. I don't know if that's true. That's just a lot of speculation online that both Wendy and Neca is gone. Wendy ain't my, going nowhere. Wendy my, ain't going nowhere yet. I don't think she's she's ready to leave yet. Is, my question is, can Bravo afford to lose Candace and Wendy and Neca in the same season, considering the colorism conversation? They no, uh, no, they no, and no, <laughs> no. Don't because do I figured it would be either Neca or Wendy. I I knew it, they, both of them weren't staying. I knew it would be one or the other. Um, it, but legit, they could afford. And they I'm lose both. Saying. All three. They weren't expecting. Like they were expecting Candace to sign on for another season, so that was a blow to them. 
So I want to see Candace pregnant. I want to follow her. Right. We're going to see it on Instagram and all that. But I would have loved to see this really yeah. play out in her, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of how we saw Ashley do, you know, because it was cool to see Ashley. I don't, I, I don't like you know football. What? Football head gets on my nerve, but it was still good to see her go through her pregnancies. You see what I'm saying? Um, I, th I think Candace knew she was pregnant at the show. I think that's why she hemmed in hard when they asked her about pushing uh, that back. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, I, I heard rumors that Bravo was trying to get her to reconsider. I think I think the execs at Bravo found out she was pregnant after they mm -hmm. filmed that reunion. Um, she mm -hmm. probably told them. Um, but... I don't think they expected her to quit. She, um, and they, I wonder if they're going to try to give her at least to do a baby special. Yeah, come they, on, they baby. They want yes, I want a baby from, special. From Ritz, I mean, from Pisces lips to God's ears. Let her get that. But <laughs> I've been wanting a special from Candace. I wanted to see Candace, like, how they had that, uh, the, the, how they had the show with Escape when they were on tour, that, that first Escape show, not the last one. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I feel like they should have done a special following Candace on tour, too. That would have been dope. What is it? She's they, six. There's a lot of potential with Candace that they won't tap into because mm -hmm. I'm sorry, people watch Potomac whether they hate her or love her. People watch Potomac just to react to Candace. Like, mm -hmm. well, you know, I wasn't. I'm, I'm with my sister Barb. I wasn't a big Candace fan, especially when it came down to Monique and her fight. I feel like um, Candace was poking the bear. She she had got popped. Yep. Um, and then so um, <laughs> the um, same way how. Um, you pick that bottle up to go uh do what you needed to do because somebody was popping off at your in your face it's the same difference um so when candace thinks that you know they ask what was you gonna do with that, that champagne bottle i don't know none of y'all was gonna help me so i picked up the bottle to 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 protect myself well here's the thing yeah. um that was the same thing monique kind of did because remember giselle and that was grabbing and it really wasn't them two that did anything it was everybody else that kind of touched and, and made that happen yeah. but i say that to say i've never been a candace fan because i was mad that monique left uh, if they if if since they had a fight, then they both should have left, not just one of them. And so for full circle moment for Candace uh, to have this happen again, and for now the girls, light skinned girls, green eyed bandits, um, to feel like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Candace, you, you you be talking so much mess, and you just never know who's gonna do what. I'm like, that's what I said when Monique did it. But y'all wasn't on that then. Y'all was on, no. let's get Monique out. And now that it's, okay, full circle again, and now that happened to Candace. Candace is on the she other end She called him out on that. But she I called him out on that. I know she and, did. But, but yeah. so, so for no, me, talking, well, oh, at wait, this who? reunion, she uh -huh. called him out. She at this reunion, she called them out on that, and they were like, "Well, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. We did it because we were your friends, and we wanted to protect you." It's like, no, you no, didn't. you wanted to get Monique out, and y'all was y'all yeah. was looking for a reason to get Monique out. Same thing y'all doing right now, trying to get Candace out. Y'all did exactly what y'all did, except for Candace is smart enough to know I'm gonna leave on my accord and not wait for somebody to fire me. She wouldn't have and, got fired though. She wouldn't have got Monique, fired. But that's the thing about it. Monique did the same thing too. Monique didn't get fired. Monique made the decision not to come back. Mm -hmm. Monique had the right smoke. I'm just saying this. Monique had smoke for uh, Gizzard at that reunion, as mm -hmm. she should have, because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, no matter what Candace said to you, you, you and you had a few libations in your system. She was drunk, boots. <laughs> yeah. Gizzard said and she didn't want to be honest about the fact that she was an angry drunk, and that's exactly. why she hit Candace. It wasn't with Candace said in, because I'm entire... sorry, but good night. Saying good night and she was sleep was not enough. We've seen people say worse to her on this show. Giselle disrespected her in her house and she didn't get aggressive with uh Giselle. Gizzard she hit Candace because she thought she can get away with it. And mm -hmm. Gizzard started this whole entire thing, and then she also pushed you, which then caused the entire fight. Y'all, yes, the original plan was Ice and Candace out season five, and then the oh, fight happened, and it's like, well, we could get rid of Monique. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, Miss. I wanted to show that the light skinned girls were about it, about it. What the hell does that mean? I'm gonna be honest with you. About it, about it went out when uh, uh, no limit records. Make them say, yeah, and that was like 97, 99, 98, y'all. So just to be clear, let's let's be and clear when it, was, when it was cracking 97, 98. Okay, <laughs> by the time I thought she was Mia X child. Bad about it went out the window, and then no, uh, what is it? Uh, Cash Money Records was taking over for nine nine and two thousand. We ain't hear mm -hmm. bad about it no more. So mm -hmm. what do you mean you was trying to show that the light skinned girls could be bad about it? At the end of the day, you 
was a low rent, low brow, low class version <laughs> of a Vanessa Williams. Let's not, not do that. Miss America. Let's not do that. You is not, not hey, the truth. Truth. When the Libra speak and it's truth, it's truth, it's truth, it's true. Go ahead, no. Libra. Do Vanessa not, Williams, not, she's nothing of the sort. No, oh. she, I just, I'm saying that you is not Vanessa Williams, neither uh, Vanessa w without the A and with the A. You're neither one of the Vanessas. You're not Miss America. You're not the first. Listen, I would hate for her to have to be my first lady because I would have left the church. I would, she would have made me leave the church. And then I would have been making a video why I left the church. And then just y'all seen the videos where the people get on there why I did this, why I did that. That would have been a YouTube video why I left the church. Someone wait, 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 wait. On that point, I think this is why I think women didn't like Giselle and this is why they were attaching themselves to her husband. Go ahead. I'm just, this is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm a, like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this first lady. I'm about to go mess with her husband. I'm about to go play with her husband. I believe that's how it go. Go ahead. I didn't want to catch nothing you about, <laughs> nothing about Giselle gives warmth. At no, all. Nothing about her gives <laughs> warm and open and accepting. She doesn't give mm -hmm. approachable. Not even what like, I'm, I'm sorry. Is. Cause you I know, know, I, I, I I know the real church ladies, you know, shout out to the elders, all the people with elders, miss, you know, the praying see. grandmothers, mm -hmm. the praying grandmothers. And I'm saying like, typically those are the people you don't even have to know them and you just feel like you can lay your burdens on them and they're going to mm -hmm. give you some encouraging and uplifting words. Nothing about just well, they're gonna anoint you. because, because <laughs> ultimately a first lady, it's, it's her job to like help lead the ship in a way help help uh yep. pilot the ship but i'm i'm also captain excuse me captain the ship but also like they they're supposed to be like they typically are over like the women's ministries and um they are they're the leaders in the church for the women they organize different programs and events and stuff and you typically are able to go to your first lady the first lady is the one visiting people who are sick or elder mm -hmm. you know or going to comfort people when they've lost a loved one and stuff like that Just Giselle don't give me my she's gonna show up to the hospital if my grandmama is in the hospital <laughs> she don't give me like I can go to her she's gonna pray pray over me and I'm gonna feel the spirit just move and shift all of you know sometimes I'm about to pray over you and you just feel it all on your skin Heck yeah, your body like, chill up Gis Giselle ain't got no all anointing right. in that mouth Giselle ain't got no anointing she got I no never, anointing have we ever seen her pray on the show ever have we ever seen her great uh bless her food? Have we ever seen anything that remotely says that she was a first lady? And it's so no. funny too because what Karen did for Kiana in that moment, making mm -hmm. sure you know she contacted her mom, like when when she was you know um tearful about it, saying thank you so much, like what you did for me. That is typically what you would see of someone like yep. Giselle with Giselle's resume. That is what a first lady does. Giselle yeah. wasn't there right there though, sis. Don't, don't, I mean, I'm not no, giving nothing to Giselle, also, but she was not I'm, there right then. I'm Nobody speaking to, no, no, I'm, I'm no. not speaking to her actions and after the fact, I'm speaking to the type of energy she has. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I'm speaking to, like the type oh, yeah. of energy that Karen had in that moment. That is what a Giselle, because regardless, yeah. like, like I said, the first lady is just a, a title. But mm -hmm. I'm speaking to the type of energy and the type of uh, personality that you have to have to fulfill those duties. And I'm saying she doesn't have one. And I don't even have to know how she was when she was still married to Jamal and a first lady. Because the way, regardless of whether you're married to this man or not, your essence doesn't change. Mm -hmm. She does not have the essence that tells me that she is open and accepting of people who are different. Giselle gives the type of woman who, when she first meets, you she looks you up and down to see what she what about you was wrong <laughs> she don't you give somebody that's like welcome I, I i don't even know you and i love you i'm gonna pray for you no matter what like she don't give that energy no so mm -hmm. i just think she was a terrible first lady which is why they don't see it for her at that church and let's be honest though as long as giselle been on this show as much as people have been bashing giselle we've never seen anybody come forward and say i knew giselle before this show she's an amazing person mm -hmm. we've seen that about other people on this show but we've never seen that about giselle Seen she was an awful first lady. I don't mm -hmm. have to have proof. I I can tell by the way she walks and how she talks. She was a terrible first lady. And yes. when Han Jamal left that church, she was not missed. For mm -hmm. sure. Ladies, I got to go get ready to braid my client's hair right now. Yeah. I just want to pop magic on real quick. Come you know, on, I gotta, magic. I got to go do. Um, I was trying to uh, put out some content this morning before I left, but I will a little later. Um, But I had to jump on with my fam because. Y'all go check out Cutie here. if you haven't. Yes, uh, y'all, 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 check me out. I'm, 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 I'm pushing the baddest braider on YouTube. Come on, come on, baby. Um, cutie. <laughs> yes. Um, I 
I have a question. Sure. Here she go. <laughs> hey, Beth, I, not I said I was going to ask her. We've had this conversation before. Um, and you can tell me in private, but okay. did you ever have any run-ins with one Orenthal James Simpson? No, Ooh. but I did have a run-in with his daughter, Ar Arnell. Um... Oh, let's talk about that. <laughs> and it was during the time about the trial. And, the, and, and, and this story goes back to when I met Kobe and Shaq. Ah. So the night that um, I met, I didn't meet Arnell, but she was in my realm because at the time, I think she was talking to Shaq. Um, we didn't know for sure, but I think she was talking to Shaq. Her, her, her dad was um, going on trial. We, I was at the comedy store. Uh, my sister and her friends all decided that Shaquille had just got to our team, got to the Lakers. He had signed for $123 million. So my sister is four years younger than me. One of Four years younger than me, she, um, her and her friends were at my house and they was plotting and planning. Yeah, when we get Shaquille, they, I don't care who talked to him, who wop you wop. And I'm looking at them like, they are so crazy. These kids, are and I already had two children at this time. So I was like, y'all crazy. So anyway, go to the comedy store. All the, a lot of Lakers is in there at the time. Shaquille happened to be there. And um, so this dude walks past, we're, we're, we're trying to waste time to act goofy right so we're trying to we're looking at the wall of all the people that have been at the comedy store and signs so we're at the wall looking around and and all of us is like okay Sha Shaquille's about to walk by so we're looking and why Shaquille taps I'm the only one got kids everybody else is single no kids no nothing he taps me on the shoulder he was like come here I look back at my girlfriends, oh my sister girlfriends, still my girlfriends, but look back at them like ah, he he wanted me talking to me. I don't want Shaq, but I'm just like whatever. Go out these double doors, and Shaquille's like, so uh, hey, how you doing? Something? I'm good. Looking, I'm talking about my neck, bro. I'm like, hey, how you? <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah. Um, he said, uh, that's your sister in here. I said, Shaquille, you you brought me out here because you want to talk to my sister. He's like. I'm shy. I said, bro. <laughs> That's funny. I go back inside and go tell these girls that you didn't want to talk to me. Whatever. I said, I'm going to get my sister for you, Mr. Shy. He said, no, I got somebody for you. I got somebody for you. I'm going to hook you up with somebody. I was like, he was like, now I'm older. Remember, I told you I'm four years older than my sister. Because I'm four, four to three years older than all her friends. And he's like, um, yeah, I'm going to give you my rookie. I'm going to hook you up with my rookie. And I'm thinking to myself, rookie? I mean, young. He younger than because me and Shaquille are the same age. I said, dang, he said rookie. That mean they young. And then my brain said, rookie. The only rookie that's on the Lakers right now is Kobe. That boy's 18 years old. I'm like 25 at the time. I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, rookie. He brings me Kobe. <laughs> brings me freaking Kobe. And Kobe is bald headed. No facial hair, not even a mustache. She's 18. And I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, Cutie, you know, so I me and I was like, I was like, hey, how you doing? He's like, and he, okay, remember, I'm 25. He's 18. He grabs my hand. We're holding hands and he's doing like this. Can y'all see? He's doing like this to my hand. Oh, oh, girl, I can't stand when they do that. Oh my God. <laughs> Kofi, I love you. Girl. I'm knowing that. Girl, that turned me all the way off. I said, this little boy is rubbing my whole finger. What is going on here? And so at that time. Just like one of these old ninjas. Girl, <laughs> Arnell, Arnell, I'm sorry, Arnell and Paula J. Parker, who's the, you know, the actors, Craig in Friday. Come on, um, girl, you know we know who that is. Out, you <laughs> two walk out, and Mal my sister Mallory is talking to Shaquille. I'm sitting here talking to Kobe, and they are like kind of up at the top of the parking lot looking down at us. And <laughs> for whatever reason, they like, mm, we hungry, we so hungry. That just that just pissed my sister off because she thinks they talking about us as in being thirsty or like oh, they over there talking to us. And so so they like, yeah, they oh, we so hungry, we so hungry. My sister's like, what? And my sister's a fighter. Hold she goes running up there trying to fight the girls. I'm like, excuse me, Kobe. So I exit stay left, go up there. I had to grab my sister, trying not to bite Arnell and Paula J. Oh, no. So we ended up dispersing. And so I didn't get to finish talking to Kobe. 
And so I didn't get his number that night. But my sister ended up talking to Shaquille, uh, went on a date with him too when he was doing his movie. She he went on a, she went on the, the movie set with him. I think it was mm -hmm. Shazam or Kazam or whatever the name of the movie Kazam. was. Yeah, so she went on the movie thing and they went on a date. And I'll tell y'all the other part of the Kobe story because there is a part two to that Kobe story, but we won't do that right here. Uh mm -hmm. Another time, but yes, I met Kobe and I was so like after the fact. But I was like, I already had two kids, like, he's 18, he would have been a nice little step bonus father for me. But I mean, for the kids, but uh, <laughs> I, he was for me. I said, Oh no, not the not the you gonna do like this, no nah, man, no, nah, I ain't 16, I mean, I'm 25. So yeah, y'all, that's my story, but. No, I did not meet Mr. O.J. Simpson. I did not. Or y'all would have told me. <laughs> I'm going to ask you something. Uh, well, you ever have run in with his son? Uh, Jason? No, just the sister. Just the, just the sister. Girl, don't start this, girl. <laughs> just the sister. I, if no. I would have, best believe I would have probably told Jason, like, so you know I know you helped your dad, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> But I did talk about anything I did do. Me and I, a lot of people did this. We all went by Nicole's house. Now, I did uh -huh. do that. We Were you outside by. during the Broncos chase? Girl, oh no, a Broncos chase was I, I lived in Inglewood, the 405. He went not right past in front of my house, but he was at the freeway near my house when it was happening. So I was like, this man just went past my house. It was a trip. Like, uh, I can remember that so vividly. Even I remember. Um, when the trial was over and they said that he wasn't guilty, I remember uh, living in my first apartment and the apartments that all were, you know, stacked together, not a project, but just, you know, your apartments. I can remember everybody, the whole building roaring. Yeah, woo! Like you would have thought a game was on, but we were all so happy that he got off because of so much police brutality that was going on. So it wasn't like, yes, we're happy he killed somebody or, you know, did something to that person. It was more like, finally, um, he did something. He got off for all the times that all this mess, you know, happened. So uh, I remember that that time very vividly. It was it was a crazy time. Looting and everything, even when, when you know, with the Rodney King, all of that. I remember all that stuff. Like, literally, it was crazy. I have God. so many questions. I want to ask you questions on live. I want to interview you about yeah. your right. time in L.A. in the 90s. I, I want to interview you. <laughs> I, I would love that because I have so many stories. I I, I literally have <laughs> Like, I, like I really want to write a book, but I literally have so many run-ins and stories about famous people. Um, I just literally said I was around. I, I, I got close to Diddy twice, but the Lord kept me away from him because okay. I, I, I usually love when I tell y'all I used to love Diddy and everybody that I've ever loved and said that I wanted to meet. It happened. Like literally, I just say it out loud to myself or send it unto the universe and it come back to me. And so he was one that I really wanted to meet, but I got close enough to him, not in his face, but close enough that um, God said, nah, you're not going to meet him. He's one that you're not going to get it. You're not going to get him. He's a demon. <laughs> so, he kept you safe. Now, Bob, we're going to interview Cutie. We are. Now, Bob yeah. sent this video, so I'm going to play it. We are okay. going to it. Before Let me see what you sent you. Yes. Let me see what my sister sent you. I, Hold up. I got to write back. How much did this news coming into your life impact the choice you made to walk away from Housewives? I would, I would say probably 95%. Yeah. I, I was really adamant about creating a space for not just for the baby but for me for us for this time in our lives where um oh my god i'm crying again some of this is pregnancy hormones i was gonna say you can blame this all on hormones you got a, a free pass for nine months you can call me you can't judge my triangles coming out anymore no, I um, I wanted the space around us and around our, our child to feel peaceful and to feel free and to feel um, positive. And we can just experience it on our own. Yes, without, you know, 
any added pressure, good, bad, or indifferent, um, from, from the show. And, you know, I just, I, I was not confident that I could have that in the space that the show is in currently. Um, so it was kind of, it was kind of a no brainer. Like after we did the implantation, I was like, well, you know, maybe we could make it work. Um, but you know, I would, I would have nightmares about it not working <laughs> and you only, you know, I could maybe only do this once. Like who knows? It's, it's such a, a gift and a blessing. Um, and like a, a really amazing and scary time. Um, and I just wanted to experience it, you know, free of any unwarranted stuff. Yeah. Protect your peace as Protect much as you can. Yes. Yeah. Your statement, how much did this new... So that was it. Candace decided to protect her and her baby. I'm, I'm proud of her for making that choice. Me too. I'm going to tell you another reason why I'm proud of her too, because y'all you know, I got to leave. I don't know how long you guys are going to be up here, but I'm proud because um, you do have to protect your the baby. People be like, what's going to happen to the baby? And, you know, yeah, you can spar your baby and that baby end up looking like the person you can't stand. <laughs> We got enough mix over there. With this we got we got room for no more. No. And also, um, listen. What I feel like people don't realize with pregnancy that, and it's gonna be a whole other conversation for another time. But just to say this, pregnancy, even though I've never gone through it, more power to the people who have. Uh, mm -hmm. I respect you. I truly do, because that is playing Russian roulette with your life every time you get pregnant and have a baby, especially being a black woman in what goes on in the medical community when it comes to us that is i believe i heard and y'all can correct me if i'm wrong that is as close to death as you're ever going to get without dying it feels it's, having, <laughs> it's having a baby yeah. and during the pregnancy your baby feels everything that you feel if you are happy, your baby feels that you are happy. If you are stressed, your baby feels stressed. That's why on all the shows, the medical dramas, okay, I am uh, I am okay with Meg Gamma, okay? Uh, you know, I watch a lot of Cop Gamma shows too, but Meg mm -hmm. Gamma shows, that's why they tell you you can't be stressed out during the pregnancy. And that's why typically a lot of women end up on bed rest if they have been like stressed out for the majority because your baby can go into distress Mm -hmm. you don't know what could happen so her choosing her peace and choosing her baby over the show was the best thing for her because i'm gonna be honest as much as people like to say well you don't know and you can't say they don't like candace like she was gizzard dehumanized her all season that mm -hmm. thing that that thing like a thing or that she never used like person or her she never used those type of pronouns she never used respect <laughs> yeah she never had respect for her so no one was ever going to let up on her whatsoever and there's only so much a wendy and i would say karen because you know karen loves when the girls are pregnant new life and all that stuff mm -hmm. there's only so much a karen and a wendy can do when it's three on five no five on three or six on three or however many people was going to be against Candace. So much respect to her for choosing her peace. Cause some people don't decide to choose their peace. I'm going to be honest. I wish um, football head would, when she was pregnant those two times would have decided not to be on the show too. And I'm going to tell you why, because you up until the very moment giving birth was arguing on Twitter with Candace and she got blamed for all of that stuff that was going on, even though it was an avid back and forth. And the pregnant person who was pregnant decided to continue the back and forth. When it comes down to it, if things no longer serve you and you need to protect your peace, and you need to make sure that the life that you are carrying and decided to bring into this world because it's a decision. It was not a mistake. It wasn't an accident. It was a decision that you have decided to bring into the world that we are currently living in today. And everything that's and outside stress is enough. Make this decision for like all the women who get pregnant or decide to, you know, have children and you're on these reality shows. Make the best decision for yourself because the cast is stress, but the schedule of having the film is also added stress as well. 
you don't or going on press tours and having to do interviews all that is stressful make the best decision for you and your baby if you want to come back next season or the season after that okay but during this moment where you want to enjoy it and you just want to be in the moment and you want this to go the best way possible take a break i agree i definitely agree Hey y'all, I gotta go. I love okay. y'all. <laughs> love y'all so love much. You, cutie. And, and Kenny, I am gonna write a book. One day I, I really am. I um I'm already trying to work on that right now because yeah, I got a lot yeah. to say. <laughs> I got a lot to say. And ain't enough hours on YouTube for me to do that. <laughs> I want to do it. I am gonna write a book. So thank you for that. Um, you guys have a lovely um uh, Monday, okay? Um, and um, uh, Y'all follow me if y'all haven't followed me. Somebody drop cutie link in the chat because we got new people around here. Yeah. I, don't I don't know if y'all heard, but we made 600 over the weekend. Oh, I'm happy for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we, yeah, did, yeah. Did. we got new I just, people. I just need a few more for my 500. I just need like four more yes, people. Drop the link in the chat. Four more. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on my on my on my way. I'm on my way, y'all. Yes. So. Drop yep. these links in the chat. Y'all go over there and subscribe to her. Show her love. She does great content. She reviews shows that I don't. Because I'm mm -hmm. here to tell you now. I said I had an announcement. I refuse to review Real Housewives of Potomac ever again in my life. Man, I stopped reviewing that one. But I guess this Barb was. But yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. You know, I'm going to still be around to see my Potomac. I'm not going to boycott. I think the women need their money. So we're not going to boycott. Um, we're just going to see what Giselle going to do now that she don't have uh, Robin since she thinks she's Batman. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we shall see. Okay. <laughs> um, Feisty, anything else for the people? I just want to wish everybody uh, um, a good rest of your day. Um, mm -hmm. we had a good conversation, and y'all know we be right on here down to the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Always that is it for me. Yes, and I know the people have been wondering. Give me before April ends, you will see the return of game night. Come on now. Before April before April ends, you will see the return of game night. I've been doing a lot of wrestling content. On my um, YouTube shorts, I've been talking about my soap operas, okay? Um, so there's that. Before April ends, we'll, we'll see the return of game night. And then I'm working on some other things. So just bear with me. I had to finish this out. I had to be done with Potomac so I can say that I did it. I finished. I'm done. I get you. And with that, yes. And with that being said, I love y'all. See ya. That was it. That was all. I don't have no more to give y'all as it pertains to this show. Check out my YouTube shorts. And then I'm going to be creating content. Okay? More content for the people. But yes, before April is over. Before April is over, we will we will see the return of game night. So continue to watch out for the videos. Watch out for the lives. Watch out for the community tab to see what's going on over there. But you will see a return. And then um, I'm working on some things. I'm at, I'm adding Sims content to the channel. Y'all know I love the Sims. Y'all know I talk about it. I did a thing where I was shopping for uh, CC on here too. So I got some Sims content coming. And um, I had an idea for a um, starting to rewatch certain things. So be looking out for that because, or that's another thing. Let me know which shows y'all would want to go back and start from the very beginning. Like, let's watch it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> oh my God. Let's talk about all of this stuff. Um, one of the shows that I was saying was I wanted to start, and I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but one of the shows I wanted to like start from the very beginning was Degrassi. So that is up there. If y'all have any shows y'all want to see me do or uh, start to rewatch, let me know. And with that being said, watch out, check out the wrestling content. I'm going to be coming more with uh, the soap opera content I'm coming more with. I'm coming with the Sims, so be ready for that. Okay, I make some cute Sims around here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to 
start watching Degrassi, like rewatching and talking about it. So if y'all want to talk about it, y'all want to watch along. If y'all want to do it with me, let me know. Um, I I'm going to be honest with you. I'm such a perfectionist and I, oh, I hate the way my voice sounds when I'm, I have to listen to myself back. So there have been many times where I've filmed stuff and just scrapped it. So I do have some college advice videos coming back out. Like I, I do need to film them because I had some, but I want to refilm them and make sure like they are the best of the best. So be watching out for those as well. We got content around here. We're no longer doing things like we're no longer reviewing or doing content that no longer serves us or no longer feeds our souls we're gonna be talking about you know some serious stuff like um once again i believe in a ceasefire i hope y'all do too we're gonna be talking about things that feed the soul and books okay because we're gonna be on too feisty to go ahead and bring back the book club but with that being said Victoria Monet said it last night on her Coachella, uh, her Coachella performance, and I forgot his name, but he's a nice uncle. Why are you thinking small when you should be thinking big, bitch? And we about to be thinking big over here. So, with that being said, I love everybody. I hope y'all like the content. I hope everybody watches up until this point who we'll catch it on the replay and on the playback. And if you catch it, like, if you watch up until this point, in the comments, I want you to put... Mm, Who do you think is the, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Who do you think is the most unnecessary character on Degrassi, okay? And if it's who I think it is, I'm a heart it. If it's not, it's not going to get no heart. But with that being said, I'm about to hear. I'll see y'all later. I love everybody. Bye.